I wanted to look at my games <laughs> through, you know, because you can look at your friends' games, right? And I wanted to do look at my games through my brother's account because I was too lazy to open my laptop. And then I'm like, wait, no, I don't want to, like, he's going to sleep, you know? He's like, oh, da-da-da, I want to show you something, right? I'm like, all right. And he's like, oh, well, wow, we're here. You can da-da, and I'm looking through it. And I was talking to him about stuff, and one thing led to the next. He ended up getting OBS. And we're experimenting, because my one's way too slow. It crashes whenever a Steam opens, but he can do it just fine. Although there's a few problems, exactly. Right? Where the audio in the game is way too loud, like, and then like, oh, we fixed the mic, but he somehow turned off the audio from the game, so he's trying to set it back up, and it's only making the, um, it's only making the game, like, our voices even quieter, and we're just experimenting.
Yeah, this is a game that really makes me self-conscious because I sound cringy and shit. But I know I've talked about that before. Damn, I should have just... Just wait. I've just been making fucking designs. Like thumbnail designs. Uh, da, 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 yeah, so that's where I was. This one, so these ones are just amusing superstar. Um, just superstar designs. <laughs> Sorry. I just realized um that is the fucking what's the word? What a fucking coincidence, right? And it's like I made a, a thumbnail design thumbnail design, right? And one of them is like Son Sonic doing the board like laying down pose and I flip it over and I saw a glimpse and I thought it was like the same drawing no it's just it's just a um similar pose of uh hat kid rambling about the diary as a like a thumbnail for a hat in time and I just thought that is such a coincidence on the opposite pages they have almost this most identical fucking you know also, I don't know if I talked about this last time, right? And I've been thinking about this for a while, and this is going to be very confusing, right? Very confusing, but I want to say that there is... Um... With the Sakura Succubus uh, games, there's two timelines, right? And there's the protagonist with the harem of succubuses, um, you know, the succubuses, and then the her uh, the heroine with the harem of incubuses, right? Because I've been thinking about this for a while, right? But then that, that makes me a little bit more confused because it's like... So... Have I... I feel like I talked about this, right? So, like I was thinking biologically... Uh, wait, no. I might have said something in the previous uh, games that might contradict what I say, and so take this with a grain of salt. I'm not saying because if, if there's a contradictory let me know, because I don't remember much from the previous game, so there's probably lore drop I did for said characters, right? And I'm not trying to contradict myself, I just won't remember, right? So the timeline, yeah. So I was thinking biologically. So not by wait. I was thinking keeping the main character female, but more guyish, like tomboyish. But I was thinking, you know what? How about make the guy more of a um. Uh, so so there's multiple ways we could go about it, right? We could have the main character be female, like this variant of Charlotte be female. So whenever they, you know, do the deed, they can either do some lesbian sex or they can use some succubus magic and make uh, Charlotte grow a magical dick or whatever, right? Or just a magic, make it authentic, but then, you know, as I said, like, I think I said something like it lasts only a couple of hours, something like that. Or we could make him a very feisty little <sighs> hmm I was gonna say femboy 
the idea is there, but not exactly that, right? Where it's like, I want, at first glance, right? I want the main variant, like, if it is, like, a guy, right? I want the main, like, guy to look just like a dude, right? Not overly sexualized, da-da-da. So, like, you wouldn't tell there's anything feminine, right? But when the clothes come off, that's when the more, uh, I was going to say shy-ish type side comes out, but also a bit of feistiness, you know? So, like, more trembling of embarrassment and rage rather than, you know, fear and nervousness and, you know, horniness, you know? Out of, like, being humiliated, you know? A very short temper with the female timeline, right? Where, in the male timeline, I feel like he would still have an attitude, but it's not as feisty. But still won't mind, wouldn't hurt to say his mind and not be just fucking talked down to, you know? But a, a fun fact is, despite both timelines, uh, the, the, the queen of the succubus or incubus or whatever the fuck, right? I imagine, I want to keep them both female, right? Only because I want just a source of pain, right? I know that sounds weird, but I, I, it's more, the first person they date is, they emotionally connected, and, you know, and, you know, the, the ramblings I made in the third one, that is kind of canon of how I see the timeline play out, right? So that pain is still real. It's not that he has a grudge, or, you know, he's not sexist, and, like, angry at all women, it's just her specifically, right? And I doubt the gender would really matter, because he would still feel hurt whatsoever. You know what I mean? So like he's a bit more feisty. He's a, so like I imagine he's a bit more feisty in the succubus timeline because again he's in he's interested in uh well he's either interested in guys or think not that okay i imagine this is gonna sound dumb i imagine in the succubus timeline he's presumed gay right but doing it with the succubus kind of unlocked the the bisexuality in him which i don't know what i'm talking about this is all random and it sounds cringy and dumb but just go with it so that he, the, the more time he spends with him, it's less aggression and disinterest and more, like, he's more relaxed and lets his guard down, right? Because he knows he can, because I imagine, right, that it's going to sound really dumb, but, like, in, in the, let's say for the female, the succubus timeline, right? that because of the events of how hurt he was he kind of either like he thinks like you know maybe women aren't for me but also this is a dumb idea and it's very optional but like the thought of being hurt that bad by her his first love kind of makes him distance himself like at least romantically with any other female um partners right so, like, you get what I mean? Like, it's not like he, he hates all women. That's, that's not it. But it's just, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I'm, I'm, I'm digging myself a bigger girl. G grave shit. Yeah, so, like, he, you know, he's not that he's mean to every chick, but more just very cold and unresponsive and you know one word just doesn't want to really get attached but he can make friends and go out uh what's the word clubbing clubs whatever right and still have a good time with female command companions but just can't be with them intimately and these succubuses um 
who are very, I wouldn't say persuasive or pushy, but like, uh, it's more hinted, like I like to think that it's more hinted that um, despite his disinterest, you know, they don't really, they're more wearing him down in the kindest way possible, right? But it's not like a rapey type of thing, right? It's more of a mo like more, not a manipulative, but like more trying to get his guard down so that they can connect with him on a more personal level rather than just sex, right? Because at first it was sex, but seeing how disinterested and like not disgusted at the idea, but you get what I mean? They found him more curious because most men would take up having sex with such famous women, right? But seeing how disinterested and aggressive and short-tempered and whatever you want to call, right? They found him more intriguing and want to know the course why. And I imagine they never knew... They, they, they wouldn't know until the events of the third game. Where it's like in the Incubus timeline where he, like it's kind of the same but he's more open and welcoming with female friendship right and like what the fuck you good yes what uh you, a test here. Uh, you want me to mute myself yeah Sorry, my brother came in with uh, some pretty progressive achievements, right? Uh, he came in, and I heard a thud because he's like, I almost dropped my phone. If I... Almost. That was a thud. I don't know if you could hear it, right? But, like, he gives me the phone, and, like, I played and shit. And he wants me... He wants... He's like, yo, 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 this is the 14th experiment. And that just cuts off. And like the audio, and I was just telling, the audio seems fine for now. But when I imagine myself using it at that volume, if I start raging, I'm going to drown out everything else, right? Yeah. As a, Anyway, as I was saying, right, I imagine that in the Incubus timeline, he is more grudge and hatred towards her specifically rather than being cold to the female race, female, female race, <laughs> the female race in general, right? 
and I guess it's optional for you to mix and match whether you want like I think it's really up to you right I'll, I'll probably oh, maybe I won't maybe I will make a male and female design so if you want to work with the female design in animating whatever or the male design you know I personally think uh, grouchy fucking sharp tongue sharp teeth grumpy angry little fanboy is the best design but like make it so it's like it's not that he is like br you know bright muscles but clearly there's nothing feminine until you take remove the clothes so it's like you know like a kind of like a deceiving trap My brain spaced out thinking of horny pose. Sorry. I ponder my options for a few moments. Again, um, I could say some shit that contrasts from previous games. So let me know and I can decide whether it does contrast. Like if I could like, you know, say like, oh, the things that that doesn't count what I'm saying now counts that are or like actually maybe try and work around it. So they both count. You, you know what I mean? I ponder my opinion. Is there no music? Okay, the sound is on. I ponder my opinions for... Fuck! I ponder my options for a few moments when... Ow, that's loud. Hey, Hyro. Ayu slides up to me. Her voice unusually... Uh... Mo modulated, soft and girlish. I wonder if her personality shift can be attributed to the punish punishment Maria rained down upon her. She isn't acting like her usual abrasive self. I was wondering, um, are you toys with one of her orange twin tails? Could I ask you a question? You already have. Yes, I know. But I, may I ask, may I make further inquiry? Now, what's with all this inquiry business? She sounds way too formal, and her... What the fuck is that word? Irrigating tones are starting to freak me out. What's up? You didn't do anything wrong, did you? Wrong! Ayu puffs, her, Ayu puffs herself up, betraying some of her former docility. Why do you think I've done something wrong? I don't know, there was something off about the way you were talking, that's all. You haven't killed a man, have you? As if I would. Why are you blushing at the thought of that? A woman, then? Sometimes I want to murder that saggy old hag. I shoots a glare at Maria, who, fortunately for her, is too far away to overhear her, still reclining while sipping upon a fruity cocktail. You can fruit my cocktail. <laughs> but no, I would never go that far. I'm no killer. I don't actually like the sight of blood. Really? I didn't think you'd be so squeamish. I'm not, but I'm not about other bodily fluids, but blood in particular is kind of so piss shit and puke it is. <laughs> Let it rain, chocolate rain. <laughs> the others feel the chocolate rain. <laughs> so my brain's pretty fucking childish. 
Ayu's voice trails off, she frowns. Why am I talking about this anyway? This isn't what I wanted to talk about. Yeah, go ahead then. I wanted to ask you before you started making rude assumptions whether you would like to spend the rest of the day in my wonderful company. I thought it might be nice if we could go for a swim or maybe a stroll. Though it's not like I'm asking because I like you, you're just the best of the bad batch. I don't get along with any of the others and I want to stay as far away from Maria as possible, so you'll have to do. I'm bestowing this privilege upon you, so you had best be grateful. Kneel down at my feet and... Hey, Hyro. I think this, uh, this is the worst voices I've done for the characters, but like, again, I, I don't want to listen to my cringy voice and go back, you know? So please forgive that it's not consistent. I would love for it to be consistent, but, you know, reading visual novels back to back, it's gonna get boring. I need other things to stimulate my mind, my little monkey brain. Unfortunately for I, she's unable to articulate the rest of her order. Cosmos dashes towards us. One hand waving, I turn to her and she throws herself into my arms. Her affection so zealous, it's all... <laughs> her affection so zealous, it almost bows. Her affection so zealous, it almost bows, bows me over. Sorry, I... Sorry, I was struggling to read that, because every time... I don't know what zealous means, <laughs> but I keep thinking of that fucking... Uh, like, for, uh, people probably know what I'm talking about, for, but for people who don't know, I'm just gonna sound crazy, right? And <laughs> it's like that one fucking thumbnail, right? And it's like, it's like, she's 12, and it's this black dude, like, sticking his tongue out, it's like, ZAM! That's such, it's such brain rot. Just I don't know why the word zealous, right, zealous is it's like is that a jealous? I'm pretty sure zealous is a real word. I've never heard it before. He's like, Zam. That I'm re I'm zeal zealous of you. Z zoo. It's just it's like Scooby Doo, but every first letter is a fucking Z. Zazzy and the Zaz. I almost had a stroke. Hi, Ro. Hi, Ro. Should it be softer? Hi, Ro. Hi, Ro. Cosmos clings to my bare chest and looks up at me, her amber eyes bright. Oh, wait, no, no, I made a. I'm sure I'll show it in the thumbnail, but like, do you guys want to see early access? Probably not, because there's no one here, but where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Damn it. Uh, I made a swimsuit design for this game. I'm really proud of it. Uh, uh, uh. I like that design, but I really can't remember what it's for, and it's bothering me. Uh, I've just been drawing my Danganronpa OC in places you really shouldn't be.
Ah, there it is. I might have to rework this because I don't remember. I made a design for Sakura Succubus, but I don't remember, you know, the exact one. So I may have to rework at least like not much, just like maybe like the certain facial expressions and stuff to add the cosmetics, the you know what I mean? I want to talk about this because I'm really proud of the designs, right? But I mean, if you guys aren't interested, you can skip ahead, right? I made a beach design for the female and male variant, right? So the male variant, right? Um, has a long, like, long, massive jacket, right? As well as shorts and thongs with some, like, bandage bandages wrapped around the chest. Where, um, it's hard to describe for the female design, but it's just the, the, ow, fuck, fuck, what? Fucking paper cut on my elbow, and I grinded it against my knee, and it like, ooh. So, it's like, also the, the, the male equivalent has like a, you know those like, oh, I say erotic because I think it can be very erotic where like comedically large sun hats. I think they can be very erotic and teasing. And I'm fucking crazy. So I realized that I was trying to do something and more experiment with the hair design. <laughs> but I kind of fucked up a bit because the the hairstyle it looks like the hairstyle for fucking, um, what was it, the blue, the blue head bitch from League of Legends, right? With the, you know, like, the hair over the side and then pigtails over the shoulder. With a, I wouldn't say a sunflower, but some flower, like, in the hair. Um, there's a one-piece swimsuit. Uh, and I was trying to experiment, like, th there's a lot of experiment ways I could have done it, but I, I just, I guess I it wasn't brave enough. So, basically, it's just a basic black swimsuit, where it goes to the shoulders, but, like, the arms are just, you know, arms, there's nothing, like, you get what I mean? Because one idea, right, was, you know how some designs have, like, a heart-shaped boob window, right? I was thinking about doing something like that, except kind of make it upside-down heart, so it more prioritizes, like, the under-boob, like, showing the under-boobs, or under-breasts, or whatever, rather than the top of the chest, but I didn't know how to make that work. Uh, and then around to the waist, um, so, like, she's wearing shorts, right? But there's still, like, little lines so you can see a little bit of the thighs and, like, waist, if that makes sense. Showing more skin. I made it so, like, around the neck area, right? There's still a bit of color, because I don't know why, but, like, it's a little bit, like, sure, it's hot when it's, like, one thing, but, like, when there's a little bit of skin where you see the line draws on the suit, I don't know why, but that triggers a part of my brain that I can't explain. Uh, the, the the last bit I can't really explain. The only w okay, so they're kind of like she's wearing kind of like socks, right? But. The, the, the toe parts and the back heel, like, have holes in them, so... This makes me... Th oh my god, I realize this made me look like I have a foot fetish. No, that's not the case. I did this stylistically, right? 
I promise you, I just did this stylistically. Because I didn't know how, what else to do, because I didn't want bare feet, but I didn't want the feet covered up in general, so I thought this was a more unique thing, you know? I keep drawing human ears, and my brain's trying to conflict, I'm like, and keeps lying to me, right? Because it's like, okay, I draw these ears because they're easier to do in sketch, and I'll make them pointy, you know, later on. But then it's like, maybe don't. I mean, it makes sense why, it makes sense because there's, that you're just a human in this variant, right? But then if that's the case, you can't really do anything with the eye or tail because you're not, you, you know, and I keep torturing myself about this, you know? There we go. Cosmos clings to my bare chest and looks up at me, her amber eyes bright. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how soft can I make the voice without it sounding cringely girl girlish. Why do you have a bow on your tail? I was... Sorry. Please forgive me. I was taking selfies for a bit, but I think I've got a whole bunch now and I'm getting kind of bored. You don't look busy, so I was wondering, would you mind showing me how to swim? You said you would last night, you promised. This is sounding like Maria's voice, and I just, I'm just too tired to fucking, you know, I, I finished Sonic Origins, I'm happy about that. Uh, can we give it a shot? I'm excited. Hey, Cosmos. Ayu grabs a hold of Cosmos' shoulder and wrenches her off of me, like she's some sort of bikini-clad, cat-eared wearing barnacle. Don't butt in on our private conversation. I was trying to talk to Hyro. Oh, were you? I'm sorry, I didn't realize. How could you not have realized? Are you blind as well as stupid? Can't you read the room? We're not in a room right now. Silly are you, and anyway, you weren't talking, you were shouting. I hope you weren't threatening my boyfriend. I, I wasn't threatening him, at least I don't mean to. I only told him as I've been so good to him, he ought to bend down at my feet and lick my toes clean of sand. Ew. Cosmos pulls a face. I have, I have nothing against feet, but sand is a different matter. It's a coarse and rough and irritating and it gets everywhere. Who would want to slurp up a mouthful of horrible dry sand? Ew, who'd want to eat it off her feet? I'd rather eat it by itself. You ruin the flavor with your stench, woman. Get back. It hardly matters whether Hiro wants to do it or not. If he truly respects me, he would do it all the same. R Really? Cosmos tilts her head. A ask a what? Axe ends. One finger against her lower lip. If you ask me, it sounds like a fetish thing. Nobody was asking you. Now go away. Hyro is mine. But he's my boyfriend, and he said he was going to teach me how to swim. He said. Cosmo Cosmos is right, are you? I come between the two bickering succubi before I you can yank at Cosmos' cat ears. I did say I would help her swim. I'd like to honor my promise. But I asked you if you would spend time with me first. Technically you didn't. My agreement with Cosmos goes back to last evening. And you didn't sound all that enthused about spending time with me. What was it you said? I think it... I think it was something to the tune of I clear my throat then do my best impression of I just a real voice. <laughs> I'm grinning. It's not like I'm asking because I like you. You're just the best of a bad batch. My impression isn't particularly good. There's no way I can get my voice high enough. Short of being kicked somewhere soft and sensitive, but it's instantly recognizable. Cosmos begins to giggle while I use scowls. 
I... I do not sound like that. Why is she getting off to her own impression? You do sound a bit like that, are you? Ugh, whatever. Ayu folds her arms and turns her head away, scowling. I'm past caring. You two are so stupid. You deserve each other. Go off into the ocean. <laughs> you know what I would do to fuck with her? Like, as we're walking off, I'd quickly, like, run back over and kiss her on the cheek, say talk to you later, and go back to Cosmo just to fuck with her. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Me? Someone as lowly as me? Had the courage to kiss someone as shining as you? Trust me, you have better options than me. I'm just your cameraman, right? Right? Just completely fuck with her. You see her get flustered and frustrated. Is she gonna kiss me or kick me? Who knows? That's the part of the gamble, baby! Go off into the ocean, the pair of you. And get stung by jellyfish or eaten by a shark. I won't show any sympathy. You try to piss on me and I'm kicking you in the pussy. It's not gonna work, but it's still gonna make me feel better. And I'm not upset about being turned down or anything. Hmm. It's with an explosive and harum. Which reminds me of a racehorse that I use stalks off, her hands clenched at her side. I watch as she departs, arms folded behind my back, then looks at Cosmos. She's definitely upset. Oh, she's definitely upset. Totally. I, get, I kind of feel bad for her. It'll be fine. I don't want to hang out with somebody who treats the ideal like a chore. If she wants my attention that badly, she'll have to stop being more upfront. It should be a good lesson if Maria's punishment earlier wasn't. Now, I smile. So like, okay, now to teach you how to swim. Help! No! Stop it! Ah! What are you doing? Help! Help me, Gordon! Help with cure? Ah! Help! Help! We can use the rope to trip. <laughs> Help me, Gordon! We can use these rope to traverse big pit- HELP ME GORDON! I'M STUCK! Do you want me to give you a lesson? Aye aye, Captain. I've never swum before, but I'm eager to learn. I'm going to do my best. I just realized she's a cat in water. I was gonna say something fucking grossly stupid, but I'll keep it to myself. Half an hour later. <laughs> Kitty paddle. And her tail's not there. Am I... I feel like... Depending on the sprites or images, their chest sizes increase and decrease. Am I- is, is is that just me, or am I just a pervert? I'm doing it! I'm really doing it! Look at me, Hyra! I'm swimming! Cosmo stares at me excitably as a puppy. Oh, given the ears on her head, a playful kitty? She's suspended in the salty water, her fingers curled about mine. I hold her steady while she kicks her legs to and fro, churning... Ch how the fuck do you say that? Churning up to the surf. I don't know if what she's doing is swimming, per se, but she's not sinking, which is a big improvement over her earlier attempts. It looks like she gained a bit more confidence too. Previously, Cosmo squeaked and squawked whenever her head dipped under the water, but now she seems to have accepted this as a part of the swimming experience. I'm trying to keep my teeth to myself. 
bitch got me salivating on demonic flesh. Her brow is fu- Sorry, sorry, sorry. My brain just... My brain just went into a really grossly awful thought that I don't want to talk about. It just, it just kind of shut my brain off like I was focusing on trying to like stop thinking about it but the more I tried to stop thinking about it the more it kept replaying like it's like a movie that like rather than letting it finish and move on I kept trying to skip it and then rewinding it, it her, brow, her brow is forward her expression determined Her swimsuit might show off a lot of skin, but I don't know if she looks all that sexy right now. She's too graceful. She is pretty though. Uh, she is pretty cute though. It's a bit of a shame she took off the tail before stepping into the water. That would give her an extra layer of adorableness. Okay, so these are fake uh, fake ears and tail. Okay, uh, that might be obvious, but like my brain just thought, oh, fucking demon cat girl, why not? Imagine there's other, like, <laughs> there's other demons girls, but apparently there's different realms for the different, like, sins. So, like, succubi are, like, different. They're more lust, so they're loving and caring. But pride, like, demon girls are more selfish and take what they want. So, like, it's more they're too prideful to be wrong, you know? Wrath is more abusive and, like, they're sexy, but still fucking abusive physically, emotionally, verbally. So, like, we just got the, you know, this is the best one. Sure, they're still, they have distilled the other emotions, but, like, the other ones are, like, you know? Gluttony is more similar to this one, but they, they're basically, I like to imagine the gluttony ones are more the, the lust that you buy, or, you know, the lust demons, but like on a fucking heroin or like a higher drug that drains more, and it's like mostly kills people through dehydration with the amount they take. Same with greed, but greed can be more than just the lust, you know? Like, gluttony would have more with the food, but, you know, still have, like, like, it's more, my, my brain's thinking of, like, still, like, there's still have more food, but, like, how do I say this without that sound like I'm sexualizing it, right? Like, it's more characters that, like, more, a bit more chubbier with, like, more meat on their bodies because of that. Where it's like, my brain's thinking like, like, oh, like a little bit of fat, but like, you know, not too big. But then there's like, my brain think of another one where it's like morbidly obese, but more realistic and ugly, you know? But that's just me personally, you know? Like everything, looks are subjective. I may not like morbidly obese people sexually, but I'm sure there's other people who do, you know? And that's all for you. So this is just based on how I imagine my preferences. So when I say realistic, morbidly obese and ugly, it's all subjective, you know? So don't take anything personal. Mm. Greed is more like again like pride but like it's almost like a mixture so it's more greed like not willing to share you know but as well as just wanting all their stuff they don't have any love or compassion or, or they could but it's very hard to tell behind their greed 
At least it's my dumb little thing is like So like we got the more loving better of the pack compared to the other sins. It's a bit of a, uh, yeah, I already read that, my bad. But it'd probably get in the way. You're doing great. Keep going, Cosmos. If my hand weren't intertwined with hers, I'd give her a thumbs up. Doesn't mean you can't give a thumbs up. Well, I guess, maybe? I don't know. Do you think you could manage if I let go of you? Huh? Huh? Cosmos frowns, her confidence faltering. Why have I got to do that? I'm swimming already, aren't I? You are, in a sense, but you need to move your arms and your legs. It's no good if you only kick. But, but I've only just gotten used to that. If I have to move my arms too, I'll sink. I wasn't made to float. I'm a succubus, not a witch. I'm not made of wood. I presume you don't weigh the same as a duck either? No, I don't! Cosmo shakes her head, emphatically, her legs still kicking. Droplets of water are thrown up into the air and caught in the sunlight. They shimmer rainbow colors. It's quite the pretty sight. At least it would be, but were my attention not so fixated on Cosmos, who does not weigh the same as a duck, and ergo, not made of wood, and therefore cannot be a witch. If you let go of me, I'll drown. I'll really drown, and I'll die. And I'll never be able to do all the things I want to do. What do you want to do? All sorts. I've been reading cute romance manga, and couples there do a lot of fun lovey-dovey stuff. I want to ride on the back of a bike with you, go to the theme park and the zoo. I want to see an elephant and a giraffe. I can't die until then. It was all pretty pure dreams. I'm kind of surprised. I smile fondly. Cosmo's flame might be built on the back of her skimpy outfits and scandalous poses, but she's rather innocent. Of all her succubus sisters, she was the one with the least dating experience before she met me. I'm the only guy she's ever known intimately, and I think I'm the only guy she wants to know. So logically, we've been intimate with uh, uh, the Kimono Chick and Maria. I don't think we've been intimate with Ayu Cosmos or Hazel, or the uh, the other queen bitch. Though appreciative of her fans, she cares for them for a damn sight more than Ayu does hers. Cosmos doesn't have any strong relationship with them. She draws a clear line between me and them. Her fans would be undoubtedly angry if they found out about our close relationship, and I do worry we may one day be discovered. But I think any potential fallouts would be worthwhile, as so as long as we can continue to spend time together. Well, don't worry. I won't let you die. If you start to sink, I'll pull you up to safety, I promise. Hi, Ryan. Cosmos eyes meet mine. Her butterscotch irises widen beguiling. I thought you said amber. I'm pretty sure butterscotch and amber are two different colors. She still looks uncertain, but after a pause she smiles. Okay, I'll trust you, just don't leave me. I wouldn't, I'm looking forward to our dates to the zoo too. Y you are? Hell yeah, I haven't been since I was a little kid, but well, I smile sheepishly. I guess I'm still a kid at heart. Who doesn't like gulping at the animals? Elephants are very interesting, like you said. Also the giraffes. But I think I like the lions the most. As for you, I ponder my fingers curled about Cosmos. I think you'd like the leopards, or maybe the alpacas. Oh, alpacas? Cosmos' eyes light up. 
Do they have those at the zoo too? Man, they're delicious. What? What? They do at the one my parents used to take me to. We could go check it out for ourselves sometime. If you're so inclined. I love that. I love alpacas. They're so soft and fluffy. I have a lot of stuffed alpaca toys actually. My room is full of them. Oh yeah? I didn't know that. As close as Cosmos and I are, I have never actually been to her place. She always comes to mine instead. How many do you have? Almost 50. I collect them and sometimes my fan sends them to me as gifts. My favorite is huge. I can't even wrap my arms around her. And she has galaxy fur with a co constellation all over. That does sound pretty cute, though I doubt we'll find many galaxy alpacas at the zoo. Can you make do with a normal run-of-the-mill alpaca? <laughs> Don't be silly, Hara. I would kill you for that. Cosmos grims, grins. Nothing is ordinary in running the mill with you. I don't know whether I should be flattered or turned on. Now, I'm really pumped. If I... I can't die if we're going to go on this date. So I'll do my best to master swimming without sinking. I don't... And I'll cheer you on. Can I let go now? <laughs> Sorry, my brain's being very dumb, right? So I'm imagining she's doing fine at first and then starts sinking and she's trying desperately trying to swim up, right? But she can hold her breath for a little by a little while, so she's trying to think of how to get up and she looks around, right? And she just she just sees fucking Sonic sitting on the ocean floor first time, huh? Just crossing his arm because he can't get up. And I'll cheer you on. Can I let go now? Right. I can take it. I won't let the ocean get the better of me. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no indeed. Uh oh. Okay then. Give it your all. I uncurl my hands from Cosmos's, then step back. For a few moments, things seem to be going well. Cosmos moves her arms in uh, tandem to tandem tandem with her legs, as per my instructions. These motions are faltering, but she's able to keep her chin above the water. I'm cautiously optimistic about Cosmos's progress. But then a wave breaks against her side and she seems to lose her cool. Kaya. Ah! I'm sorry, I can't do fucking girlish screams. Unless I'm playing a horror game. Her arms stop moving, her legs stop kicking, and soon the water rushes to claim her. It breaks over her legs and back, and then her head dips beneath the water once, uh, the beneath the waves once, twice, and then she disappears. Ah, jeez, I knew it was too good to be true. Don't worry, Cosmos, I won't let you drown. Think of the alpacas! I seize Cosmos beneath her underarms and hold her upwards as a farmer might uproot a particularly large, ungainly turnip. Cosmos' head breaks the surface of the ocean, scattering water droplets everywhere. Her hair is plastered to the, her, her cheeks, which are flushed, and the strap of her bikini is starting to slide off to one shoulder. She's soaked from head to toe, but at least she isn't dead. That's always a plus. Are you okay? Can you breathe? I, uh... I think so. <coughs> Cosmos splutters, then expels a mouthful of salty seawater. 
some of this water douses me, but I don't suppose it matters. I'm already wet. That didn't go exactly as I'd hoped, but I think you're making progress. Oh no, she's she's hacking up a water bowl. Very gradually progress. Um, or oh, very gradual progress. Uh, I glance to the shore. Do you want to sit down? Maybe I should. I get a bit overconfident when you complimented me. I feel like I can do anything, but I should have known better. Cats aren't known for liking the water, and neither do our packers. I think I'm a land mammal after all. Well, damn. Haifumai cooks us dinner when we return to Ayu's beach house after a long day spent enjoying the Azur, uh, Azuri surf and the golden sand. Sands? Sands? <laughs> she makes a bevy of traditional Japanese dishes with mounds of perfectly cooked fluffy rice alongside it, which is all incredibly delicious. Once the pans have been scoured, scored, the dishes washed and the cutlery put away, the sun has already set. The moon is as round as one of the dinner plates high in the night sky, and the stars twinkle, twinkle serenely. Serenely. It's not as hot as it was during the day, but it's not cold either. It's a pleasant, picturesque kind of night. It'd be nice to go for a walk on the beach after sundown. But I'm stuffed after Haifu Mai's extravagant meal and tired after canvassing the beach during the day. I consider hitting the hay early when a cheery proclamation from Hazel gives me pause. Hey everyone, listen up, I just had a really great idea. If you're gonna go for a jog, do it by yourself. Coming from you, that seems unlikely. Are you who was Heather to engage to in the time-consuming and tricky process of painting her toenails looks up frowning. You've never had a single good idea in your life, let alone a great one. Now it pains me. I fear I must side with you on this matter. You have energy and excess, but little in the way of intelligence. Golly, I love this woman. I doubt any idea of yours would be worth listening to. Hey, d don't be like that. Just hear me out, okay? This idea of mine's a real is. <laughs> this idea, the <laughs> fuck. This idea of mine's a real incredible, amazing one. If you do say so yourself. I sorry, I just I know I said this, but like I, I I just can't help but smile when she's on screen. Well, sure, yeah, but I bet you all agree with me once you hear what it is. Ahem. Hazel clears her throat. Perhaps for a dramatic effect, then announces with a toothy smile. Since it's the summer, and we're all on vacation, we've got to tell ghost stories. It's a human tradition, and though we're not humans, it wouldn't hurt to honor their customs. Uh, I speak for myself, bitch, I'm pretty human. I'm sure Hiro here can confirm this for me. Five pairs of eyes swivel to me in unison. 
pinning me in place. Oh, you are fucking dead. I mean, I'm not gonna physically kill you, but I will kill you emotionally for putting me in such a embarrassing spot. Having so many eyes on me, usually, like, I feel the judgmental stares of the women in the room, and it makes me quiver. Not with arousal, but pure pissing fear. They can smell my fear and the piss. Tired though I am, I can't possibly slink off to my room now. Everybody's waiting on me for an answer, and I don't want to let them down. Being Mr. Popular can be kind of hard sometimes. Not that I mind too much. <sighs> yeah, Hazel's right about that. Actually, it's pretty standard for people to tell ghost stories in the summer. I did, I did it a bunch back when I was a kid, when my class went on camping trips. We'd wait until the teachers went to sleep, and then we'd huddle together in our sleeping bags to tell spooky stories. It was pretty fun. Hey, see? I knew I wasn't mistaken about this. I did a whole bunch of research about summer vacation before I came here. And spooky stories are a must. There is... <laughs> They're on the same tier as fireworks and beach volleyball, if not higher. My, my. You certainly seem enthused about this. Hell yeah, I am. I've got a whole bunch of spooky stories lined up already. They'll be great for scaring the pants. Hazel glances at Ayu. Or skirts off of ya. Let's work up a cold sweat together. It'll be a good bonding exercise. Pussy punch! Damn, bitch, I'm going back to sleep. As if! In case you've forgotten, Hazel, I am an idol. We are pure, perfect beings, and we most certainly do not sweat. Y you don't Of course I don't! It would sully my image, dumbass! I'm surprised your rotten attitude doesn't do that already. <laughs> oh, what was that? Nothing, nothing. I was just thinking to myself. <laughs> and yet, despite that, you were being awfully loud! Ayu sighs and crosses her arms. If you must think uncharitably things about... If you must think uncharitable things about yours better, it would behove you to do it so with the confines of your own skull! I swear, you know how I feel about these new voices? It's the equivalent of like having a fourth season, but they couldn't bring back the original voice actors, so they bring back fucking like new voice actors that are trying but sound nothing and it's just so off putting. That's how I feel with these new voices. That way, you'll be less likely to cause offense. That's a good point. <laughs> So, what about my plan? Do y'all want to join me? It'll be super fun, horror extravaganza, full of blood, guts, and a whole gore. My stories will guarantee to make at least one of you scream, or you'll get a full refund. I'm not paying you regardless, you foolish woman. And I have no interest in squealing and shrieking over silly made-up stories like a... a... Boo boo monkey. What the fuck is that? If you want to scare me, you have to do your worst. So is that a yes? Do you want to join me in it? I suppose I might as well. It will pass the time, though I warn you, I'm not easily scared. I am a sensible, level-headed woman. Fantasy monsters cannot frighten me. They are far less ominous than my more dedicated fans. I have scrolled through a few of my fans' forums and things people say, say their beggar's belief. Ayu shudders. Nothing will disturb me more than the inflation fanfics I unwittingly stumbled across featuring yours truly. Oh, I think I might have read some of those fics myself, actually. Why have you been reading fanfics about me? Why not? 
like to take an interest in your activities, are you? Isn't that what friends do? I'm not your friend, you imbecile! I tolerate you! But that does not mean I like you, and I do not want you looking up perverse fan works of me! Is this, this is how it feels like when fucking v to see porn of each other. <laughs> it's disturbing! It's okay. I don't think any less of you because of it, are you? Besides, there's a bunch of weird fan art and fanfics of me too. Nothing can shock me now. You say that, but my horror stories have been fermenting in my head for a while. They're incredibly potent now. Like, Kim Chai. Do you think you can handle it, Cosmos? Yes, I... yes, I can. This sounds like fun. I too think this proposition is a charming one. I'm very fond of ghost stories. You mean I... Uh, something last name is one of my favorite authors. I love the eerie atmosphere, atmosphere that prevails in the majority of his stories. I'm not sorry. Let me get a drink of water because I can't do her wrong. So sh shit, sorry. <clears throat> I'm not so fuck. I'm not so sure about this myself. Maria, who has been oddly quiet during this exchange, now speaks up, frowning. She says, "It sounds like a waste of time. Horror stories, as well as as we all know, are nothing but nonsense. There are vastly more important things in this world to discuss than silly fantasy screeds." That is, that is true enough, but you could say that of any work of fiction, there are all imaginative works, that, but that does not make them any less worthy than a dom, democ democracy, dom, dom, domiciary, documentary, or a biographery. Indulging in fiction can only allow one to experience a wide garment of emotion, all the while in the comfort of one's home. They can be most edifying, relaxing too. You want to try one, Maria? You might enjoy it. I doubt that very much, but well. Maria coils a strand of white hair about one finger, her brow forehead. I suppose I can give it a chance. You will seem enthused about it, and I would not wish to spoil your fun. Alright, now we're four for five. What about you, Hiro? Do you want to listen to? Sure, I'm game. I don't have any problems with horror stories. Great, let's get started then. First, I've got to dim the lights for dramatic effect. Hazel turns the lights off and in the living room, thus plunges us into darkness. Now I want to paint... Now I want to paint for you a picture, using nothing but my voice. Close your eyes and let and let my story wash over you. It's time to step into your worst nightmare. Okay. Um... It just now to occur to me, how the fuck am I supposed to read with my eyes closed? Oh, I'm not su Never mind. I'll read this in my own voice because, you know, it's just easier. Once upon a time, not so very long ago, there was a cute but scatterbrained music student we'll call... Hmm. How about Azur... Uh, Azusa? Azusa was a cheerful girl, but she had a secret, which she nursed with her breast like a flickering flame. She was passionately, ir irrevocably in love with the campus idol, Mamaiko. 
Mamaiko was a beautiful girl from a wealthy family and with all the affi affections of affluence. She wore expensive clothes, spray uh, sprayed herself with the floral perfume, and her hair was neatly teased into curls. She could play numerous instruments, her essays received the highest praise, and she was the darling of all facility. And most of the student and most of the student body too. Azusa knew when she when she laid eyes upon Mamaiko that she had to have her for her own, but their social standings were so despot, Azusa feared Ma Mamaiko would never return her feelings. Azusa was cast into the uh, doldrums of blackest despair. I'm not even gonna make a Duncan Rumper reference, I'm just too tired. A box! <laughs> Sorry. But while she wallowed, a rumor began to spread around campus. According to this rumor, one needed only to take a candid photograph of their beloved and text it to a mysterious woman called Venus. Venus. Then the pair would be bonded together for all eternity. Azusa did not believe in fairy tales. She was dense, but not wholly stupid, but was so desperate she would have tried anything. Sneakily, she took a photo of Mamaiko, then sent it to the woman called Vanas. But after that, things began to go horribly wrong. Oh! New sprites? Oh. It was late at night when Azusa's phone began to beep. The sound jolted her awake to a bedroom darker than the ab than an abyss. Eyes wide, her hair rumpled. Azusa. Azusa reached for the phone. She took it betwixt her trembling fingers, heart pounding all the while for her, for she knew who it was who had messaged her. I, this is not what I... I'm gonna be honest, this is not what I imagined Azusa to look like. I genuinely thought she would be like a more like you know those like um it's like characters like girl characters with like foggy glasses like long messy hair like you know like it's not that she's dirty but like she's a mess so it's not like she is like it's like she does shower and stuff but like she just looks off right her hair is a mess, almost like a fucking, like, you know what I mean? More, or like, kind of have like the two twig tails, but still like have strands falling all over her, like, clothing. It was Venus. Azusa read through Venus's reply once, twice, and then she felt her heart constrict with her chest within her chest Venus's message read as thus Ahem. thank you foolish girl for sending me a photograph of your beloved she truly is adorable though I fear she will not be for much longer I am a fair witch and I shall use my powers to bind you as per the rumors it would it would not do it would not do to go back upon my word, but alas, I will not let you get what you want that easily. Are you not familiar with the age-old saying that one ought to be careful what they wish for? 
If you truly loved this woman, you would confess to her on your own. But you did not. You were cowardly, and hoped instead to ensnare her with magic. This cannot go unpunished. My powers are great, and with it you shall get what you want, but not in the manner you envisioned. Mamaiko's soul shall be mine, but her body is yours. You may do with it as you will, for all eternity, until it begins to rot. But she will not be the woman you remember. Imagine, oh, that would be fucking suck. You're telling me my soul's going with a witch because one of you fuckers can't handle rejection? You know what? I'll form a relationship. I'll gaslight and form a relationship with a witch. You know? Like, I'm just... Look, I'm not trying to be mean, but you have all this magic and shit, and you can't fix your fucked up ugly face is all I'm saying. Long nose, wart, shit, green skin. Look, you can keep the green skin, you know? I'm just saying that all this magic, you can't... You choose to be ugly on purpose? Damn, that's fucking wild. Oh, you're threatening to eat me now? Oh, boo-hoo. Go ahead, eat me. It's not like I wa fucking want to be here, because i literally rather be eaten than look at your ugly, green, warty, fucking long nose face. Oh, doing all this and that. Oh, fucking... You fucking ripped your shit off Shrek 3. Suck a fucking dick, you warty bitch. Oh, now you're crying. Boo-hoo. Boo-hoo. You know what? How about you go talk to another soul, huh? Huh? It's just like, dude, that was kind of mean. Kind of mean? Kind of mean? Said the person who fucking lost, lost their soul because you wanted to curse someone in a fucking gaming match because you're a sore fucking loser. Don't come to me saying too mean. He's like, like, oh, dude, that was too far. Too far? Like, look, I'm a conqueror. I, I deserve to be here. Yeah, you deserve to be here, not me and this fucking freak. I mean, look, you had your chances to have a shower. Now we're both fucked with you smelling like Grimace's asshole. All right? Why are you so mean? Why am I so mean? Maybe if some fucker, you know, didn't fucking you know, use my body for some fucking necrophilia bullshit. I mean, technically, you're alive. <laughs> Not physically there, I'm still here talking to you. You wanted to summon a demon, but you were too fucking retarded to do it on your own. Whoa, dude, you can't say- Say what? I'm a floating soul in a bag of retards. What can't I say? Oh, you want to test me? You want to test me of what I can and can't say? <laughs> Bro, don't do it! <laughs> Not my problem, bitch! You thought I was gonna say it, fucker! Just that was going. Sorry, that was an unnecessary rant. Her essence now belongs to me. She is not but a husk, and she will haunt you for the rest of your days. Can you not hear her, foolish Azusa? She is coming to you this very moment, dragging. Behind her, as I type, she's standing outside your home, and soon she'll begin to knock. As you may imagine, Azu as you may imagine, Azusa was terrified by this message. She gripped her phone in her hand, curled up on her bed, and tried to console herself. Surely it was some prank done in bad taste. It was unthinkable that uh, Mamaiko, her Mamaiko, could have been cursed all thanks to a single photograph. Azusa thought of texting her childhood friend, Marai, for reassurance despite the lateness of the hour. But no sooner than she had begun to scroll through her contacts list, she heard it. A knock. There was only one knock at first, 
but it was a low, ominous, and it started, and it startled Azusa, so she dropped her phone upon her mattress, her heart constricted in her chest as though squeezed by a glacial hand, and her blood ran ice cold. Perhaps the message had not been a joke after all. Venus had promised Mamaiko Mama, Mama would come to her, silent as a thief in the night, and rap upon her door. <laughs> so he's just fucking the husk of Mamaiko and the fucking doors and Evan out front of that fucking <laughs> Here she was, as Venus had stated. It was too precious to be a mere coincidence, and too late of Azusa to receive any other visitors. The sky beyond her bedroom window was black as pitch. Even the stars and the moon seemed to have been extinguished. There was no light in Azusa's room, nor any hope. Perhaps, Azusa told herself, if I sit very still and very quiet, the person outside my door will go away. But they did not. Another knock rippled through the darkness of Azusa's home, unwindingly in the air like thread. Then there came another, and another. The knocking grew more insistent. The passing seconds, Blazusa grew more and more fearful. Her heart was beating so hard now, she feared it might rupture within her breast. She did not want to answer the door, but she feared if she refused, the interloper would split it open like a walnut. Then they would be even less obliged to listen to reason. Nobody likes being kept out in the cold, not even monsters. Uh, all right, I'll. All right, I'm. I'm coming. I'll let you in, so please don't hurt me. I never wanted this to happen. Azusa rose from her bed with trembling legs, then crossed her dark, darkened bedroom. Her floorboards creaked beneath her weight, dark and sinister, and all the while the knocking continued. I think my my problem with the reading, like horror shit, is like my voice keeps trying to go lower and lower to the point that it can't go, and it keeps trying to get lower. So I was like. You know? So I'm trying to raise it back up so you can actually fucking hear what the fuck I'm saying. It echoed within her ears over and over, threatening to drive her to madness. Azusa's apartment was a small one, with only two rooms. She had lived there for a year, and it was a f as familiar as her, as her own palm. But in the dark, she stumbled. Everything looked strange and shadowy. Even her rice cooker upon the counter made her start. Her whole body was numb. The knocking continued over and over until our intrepid but stupid young heroine reached the front door where her shoes were lined up like Russian dolls. She swallowed. Then she reached out. I'll let you in. I'll let you in, so please don't curse me. Don't hate me. I only did this because I love you. I I'm so sorry, Mamaiko. As Azurasa's fingers curled about the door handle and was shockingly cool, so much it seemed to drain the warmth from her skin. She turned the door, the lock clicked, and it drew back, to reveal a shambling figure that defined Azusa's comprehension. 
it was Mamaiko, but at the same token it was not. Her hair, only so perfect, fell in a tangled about her shoulder. Obscuring much of her face, her eyes were shrouded in darkness, but her mouth was twisted in a look of despair. Her skin was white as chalk, white as death, and as she stumbled forth, Azusa drew back, aghast, finally aware of what she had done. Venus, whoever she was, had cast an awful enchantment upon her. Mamaiko. She had, with nothing more than a photo, stripped all that was human from the prim and proper young lady, transfiguring her into something awful, something evil. No. Oh god, no. As Usa stumbled, she tripped and hit the floor with a dull thud which could not break the pall of eerie silence. Mamaiko, is, is that really you? Mamaiko did not say anything. Perhaps she could not. She only drew closer, arms outstretched as she made to fold Azusa to her. To take her. Mamaiko, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Azusa whimpered helplessly, tears beating in her eyes. It seemed as she sat there staring at the thing which had once been Mamaiko, that they were the only two people left in the world. She could scream if she had the breath, but who would hear her? Who would save her? She had been plunged into a nightmare, and she knew because she would things that could bump in the night, and she knew as she felt Mamaiko's fingers close about her wrist, her Karen breath rasping lifeless upon her cheek, that she would never, ever wake up. That actually did sound me a bit, because I wanted, I was hoping for a happy ending, and then they fucked up. That actually unnerved me a bit, I'm not gonna lie. So, what do you think? Hazel con sorry. Hazel concludes her tale with a self-satisfied grin, leaning back upon the couch with one leg crossed. That was pretty spooky, huh? Well, I wonder. Haifumai, who's taken up the mantle as our resident horror expert, folds her arms. Her expression thoughtful. Her expression is thoughtful. I suppose your tale contained a lot of aspects of classic horror stories, though I cannot help but feel a touch of disappointed at its conclusion. H how so? D do you think it wasn't gory enough? I could have had a zombie, uh, Mamai code tear her pointy teeth straight through Azusa's throat, all growls and grah. Hazel dives at Ayu, who's sitting beside her, and begins to tickle her, who, to which Ayu shrieks, G Get off me, you moron! You're going to wrinkle my clothes! Sorry, but I can't. I'm too busy being a zombie. We don't have brains, so we can't listen to orders. All we know is blood. Ah! Now give me the goods. You'll be getting no goods from me, idiots. Stop that! No... <laughs> No, wait! Don't touch me there! That's ah, 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 Stop it! Ah, ah. <laughs> you giggles, pinned beneath the couch and the weight of Hazel's body as her storyteller runs her hands beneath the hem of her skirt. Hazel! Ayu lashes out, one of her feet catches Hazel in the stomach. <laughs> Hazel's stomach might be toned, but Ayu's legs are lean and deceptively muscular, trained after years of perfect, perfecting complex dance routines. Hazel recoils breathless and cradles her belly. <laughs> uh, 
Panting heavily, she brushes a few loose strands of hair behind her ear. Then she smiles. You might look cute, but you give, but you give as good as you get. Guess that's I U I for you. If any zombie tried to eat you, you'd knock them flying. Of course, I'm not to be trifled with. Please remember that the next time you try to attack me. You might not be so lucky to escape with your head attached to your shoulders. Don, she looks like a flower, but she sure as heck stings like a bee. I gotta remember that. <laughs> I kinda like my head where it is. I don't wanna end up like Azusa. Hazel giggles. So, what were you going to say about my story? Hi, Fumai. Do you think it'd be better if there was more blood and gore? It is quite the opposite. In fact, I think you tip too much of your hand. The way you built suspense was commendable, but it all falls apart when... when... Mamaiko was revealed to be just... to be the one at the door. If it were me, I would have ended the story before the big reveal. It is often better to keep the reader, or in this case, the listener, guessing, particularly in horror. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That just fucking triggered me because it reminds me of the endings, a few endings of fucking Fazbear Fright books and that upset me so. And it's like, you just, you just end it there? You're not gonna give me a conclusion? You may be right, but that still upsets me. Often our imaginations can conjure up scenarios more horrifying than the words ever could. So you're not in the blood and guts gore camp. There is a time and place for it, but it is not the sort of horror I prefer. I like subtle, disquitting stories with flickering lights and ambient noises, ghosts and malcontented spirits are my forte, not blood-soaked zombies or serial killers. <laughs> I guess I should have figured as much. Let me guess, you're a fan of creepy abandoned shrines too. But of course, I'm very pra pra practical to them. I knew it. And what about the rest of you? Do you like my story? He was looking at me expectantly, her eyes wide. I guess she's waiting for feedback. What should I say? Uh, it needs a bit of work. Because you confused me, like, I thought, like, she would, like, come out the door and then drop limp as, like, a fuckable corpse. I thought that's what they were going with. But no, she kept moving and trying to, like, grab her. I'm like, I thought you said, like, a limp thing. Like, what is she? Uh, is she trying to kill her? Is she trying to fuck her? Is he trying to eat her? What is she doing? Why is she moving? When you clearly said that's not what, like, she'd just be limp. It's like self-delivery. It needs a bit of work. I think your story could use a bit of refining, Hazel. Uh, did you really think so? Doesn't that go without saying? Ayu pipes up, her eyes narrowed. I thought your story was downright ridiculous. Who could ever be frightened of such nonsense? The story sounds kind of familiar. I've heard Azusa and Mamaiko before. The characters from a Yuri Visual novel I've read once. I even cosplayed as Azusa before. Oh, good catch. Hazel whistles. I didn't think anybody else would be into girl on girl loving like I am. I figured it'd fly under your radar. I'm not into it myself, but I like you girls. And I like visual novels. I've read a lot of different ones. Are you admitting you stole your story, Hazel? I knew you were scummy, but I didn't think you were a plagiarist. That's a crime, you know. Hey! Hazel pouts. How come they gave me one sprite, but not, like, like the other character sprite? Kind of bothered me a bit. I'm like, who were we supposed to be looking at? It ain't a crime so long you don't get caught inside. There's so many stories out there, it's hard to be wholly original. 
Oh my... I mean, she has a point, but that doesn't make plagiarism any better. That sounds like an excuse to me! It ain't an excuse, I'd change the story up a whole bunch! But you did use somebody else's characters! Oh, I'm not... I'm... Why not? I'm bad at thinking up names! Hazel's story was quite unlike the original. In the vision novel I read, Mabaiko's soul wasn't stolen and she didn't turn into a zombie. She was actually a sadist, kind of like Maria, and she bullied Azusa. But Azusa was a masochist, and she liked it, and they had a happy ending. There wasn't anything creepy about it. There, you see? It's totally different. I don't know if you... I don't know if you improved it, though. I like stories with happy endings. I take it you're not a fan of horror? It's fine, but I want Azusa and Mamaiko to be happy together. I couldn't give- I couldn't care one way or another. Personally, it's not like any of it is real. It doesn't really matter. Ayu rolls her eyes, then raises her foot. Now, I think I'm going to bed. Are you tired, Ayu? I'm tired of Hazel's stupid ghost stories, and I don't want to be tickled again. Night. Ayu leaves the room, and Haifumai and Cosmo soon follow suit. Now it's only Hazel, Maria, and I in the living room. So, what do you think? Hazel looks at Maria, who's been very quiet throughout the evening. Do you like my story, Maria? What? Uh, oh, um... Why is she blushing like that? Maria blinks, startled, then shakes her head. It might be my imagination, but I think I can see the faint beginning, beginnings of blush upon her face. It was fine, I suppose. You suppose, but you don't know? Ah, fuck, no water. Chug, jug, whore. Weren't you listening to me, Maria? Uh, of course I was. Now I fear it did not all stick. I was, um, otherwise occupied thinking about... About? Stocks! Stocks! Why stocks? Stocks are very, very important. The success of my company is based on them. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm doing fucking Maria wrong. I cannot help but think of them. I'm really quite alright, so please don't ask any further questions. Now I must go to bed. Maria gets to her feet perhaps a bit too quickly. She almost stumbles, but she's able to right herself in the last minute. Good night, you two. Don't stay up too late, and um, Hiro. I hope you don't have any bad dreams. Maria's voice is softer than usual, almost motherly. The look she affixes me with one of genuine concern, so compassionate it warms my heart. Her exterior might be cold and hard, but deep down Maria's a huge sweetheart. Thanks, but I think I'll be fine. I've seen worse horror, horror movies than that. Hazel's story really wasn't all that scary. It it wasn't? Not really. Why? D did it bother you? No, no, no. Uh, of course not. I'm too mature to let silly tales bother me. I was simply concerned for your sake. <laughs> well, I mean, she's kind of a sadist, so she probably is getting off to the bad ending. Now, um... I really must go. G good night, dear Hyro. Yeah, uh, good night. I watch as Maria departs on trembling legs, arms folded. Now I know it wasn't my imagination. Maria was 
really was blushing and she was stuttering too. This is almost unreal like behavior. I'm starting to get curious. She isn't afraid of ghosts, is she? <sighs> what a day. I sigh to myself as I turn over beneath my covers. It's late at night and I'm exhausted, but I can't sleep. My succubus entourage are running me ragged, and what with their infighting and all the demands... But I care for each of them, and I'm happy I was able to go on holiday with them. It's been a lot of fun. I hope we can spend even more time together tomorrow. Sorry, my brain spaced out. <sighs> I yawn again and pull my covers ab about me like a raccoon, or a <laughs> like a cocoon. Blanket by the darkness, everything is still and quiet. I can hear, though faintly, the sound of waves as they lap against the shore. But the seabirds are ab absent. They must be fast asleep now. I feel I should follow in their suit, but though I close my eyes, I still can nod off. I start counting sheep, hoping this will help, but... Hmm? I stole at my seventeenth sheep, distracted by the rapping of knuckles. There's somebody at my bedroom door. For a few brief moments, I think back on Hazel's horror story and of the zombified Mamaiko. Hi, Ryan. I'm sorry to disturb you, but um, I wanted to see you. Are you awake? But the voice which accompanies the knocking is nothing at all like the guttural groan of the bloody, the guttural groaning of the bloody zombie. I recognize that voice. M Maria? E yes, it's me. Please pardon my intrusion. Um, c can I come in? Sure you can, and don't worry, I hadn't fallen asleep anyway yet. I hadn't fallen asleep yet anyway. You're not disturbing me. Thank goodness. I'm so glad. Whoa, 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 hey, hey. Uh, so suddenly, e Maria exhales in relief, then lets hers self inside. She closes the door with a soft click, careful not to cause too much noise, then turns to face me. Her, her bronze skin seems to blend in with the darkness, but her ivory hair stands out, a flickering flame atop a tallow candle. She isn't wearing her white sundress, and neither is she in her pajamas. She's clad instead in her succubus attire, though for what reason I cannot fathom. Do you usually sleep like that? The horns look like they'd get in the way, not to mention the wings. S sometimes I do. In the succubus realm, it is expected there. But as a human, I generally despise with the dispense with them even at night so you're dressed like that because uh, it's a bit embarrassing but well Maria coyly pressed the tip of her index finger together I, I thought it'd be best to spend the night like this just in case in case what in case anything bad happens. If I'm in my succubus form, it'll be easier for me to fight off any enemies. What enemies? I frown. This is Ayu's private beach. Where are the only people here? Nobody else is allowed to stay here, not without Ayu's express permission. The house is pretty well hidden, too. It seems unlikely this place will get broken into. It is not thieves I'm worried about. They are mere humans. Who could be dispensed as easily as stubbing out a cigarette? Or as they say in French, stubbing out the faggots. <laughs> I'm more worried about 
Maria mumbles something, but her voice is so quiet I can't hear her. What was that? I beckon Maria to me and she comes standing by my bedside with interlinked hands and anxious eyes. What are you worried about? It, it is, um... Maria pauses, inhales. Silly, very silly in fact. I know I'm being foolish, but I can't help myself. I've been horribly on edge ever since I heard Hazel's silly story. Though I am only too aware it is nonsensical. I don't believe in ghosts or monsters, and yet... And yet... Aha. Uh -huh. Now I think I understand why Maria came to me. My early... My earlier guess was right on the money. You really are afraid of ghosts. Mm -mm. Maria steps back abashed. Her cheeks burn cherry red, much like her succubus attire. Is it really that obvious? It was kinda obvious, yeah. I could tell you weren't acting quite yourself tonight. It all started when Hazel brought up ghost stories. You were all distracted and you were stammering. I've never seen you like that before. Oh no. Maria sighs, her shoulders slump. You don't think the others realize, do you? I will defend my queen. <laughs> I don't think they did. No, I was more focused on... What is that word? Degenerating. Degenerating Hazel's Hazel then examining you. And Hazel's not the most perceptive of people. There's a chance Haifumai may have noticed. I would not be sub I would not be surprised if she did. She knows me better than the rest. But but she's discreet. I doubt she'd tease you about it. Well, that is a relief. I would, I wouldn't be able to stand it if that old lie you knew about this. My reputation would be in ruins. She would never take me seriously again. Um, Maria blinks at me from beneath her eyelashes. You won't tell anybody about this, will you, Hiro? Let me save. But I'm gonna be- of course I won't. None of you make it worth my while. To think I would threaten her like that. Of course I won't. I'm a gentleman. Of course not. Your secret's safe with me. Thank goodness. I'm happy to know. I'm happy to know it. Of course, I never doubted you. But I- I fear I have made myself look foolish. I hope you're not judging me. This is pretty unexpected, I'll admit, but I don't think any less of you because of it. We all have phobias, and we're not always logical. I don't really like insects myself, especially spiders. There's something about their long, spindly legs. I shudder. They're so gross. That is not very manly, but it is no matter. I dislike bugs myself. Few people are fond of them, apart from Cosmos, perhaps. I'm trying to open up to you when you spit in my face. You know, I'll just take it with pride and pretend I didn't hear that. Does she like bugs? I don't know what that girl likes. Her tastes are all so unusual. She is perplexing, but at least she is relatively good-natured. I do not think she would mock me if she knew the truth, but I would vastly prefer if nobody found out. I am... I am Wakasukai Maria, the well-respected businesswoman. I am known for my superlative decision-making skills and my level-headed nature. It 
would not do it if it got out that I'm afraid of monsters. It might be bad for your public image, yeah, but it's fine if you want to confide that's this stuff in me. In fact, I'm glad you came to me for comfort. I like feeling useful. I'll listen to anything you have to say, Maria, and I won't mock you, so don't you worry. You don't need to be afraid when you're with me. Now, I pull my covers back, then pant my empty space beside me. Do you want to? Do you want to spend the night with me? I can keep you safe. Oh, Hiro. Maria's face floods with gratitude gratitude. She places one hand upon her bosom, which is he heaving and smiles. I knew I could rely on you. This is why you are my darling above all others. You are such a good, kind man. You have others? Nah, I'm nothing special. I'm just doing what anybody would. Who turned down the opportunity to spend the night with a babe like you? You might have a point there. I'm just as renowned for my looks as I am. I am my business acum acumen. But you're the only one I wish to lie with. You are my dear Hyra. And when I'm with you, I never feel afraid. Not of bugs or monsters. <laughs> Sorry. No, stop. Stop thinking like that. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just thinking of the fucking video, right? <laughs> so just imagine, right, they're like, oh, there's a spider, and it's like, she's trying to hide behind him, and he's faint, panicking, right? And I just think, it's like that dude who ate, like, I don't know, it was like, hot food or whatever, and it was so hurt, he just fucking slapped the shit out of the wood behind him. And just, just imagine you'd freak out and book it. And like, no, he would never. But this variant would never do that. We respect Maria as well as the others. You've got no need to worry on that score. I'll scare them all off for you, I promise. Maria slides into bed beside me, then cuddles to me. She rests her head upon my chest and winds her arms around my waist. Her silvery hair fanning across the pillow. I pull the blankets over us, then nuzzle against her. When I inhale, I can smell the scent of Maria's shampoo. It has a pleasant, fruity aroma, which puts me at ease. My eyelids begin to droop and I yawn. Then I fall fast asleep. Hey, Hyro! Wake up! Hyro! Where? 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 I'm roused very early the following morning by a chipper voice, so energetic it's almost draining. In the face of all the cheeriness, I feel more tired than ever before. Yawning, I crack both eyes open and soon have to blink away the white spots which bloom before my vision. Get the fuck out of my room. I where's where's she? Where's Maria? What did you do with her? Get the fuck out of my face! You being all chipper and shit, fuck off. Look, let me wake up. You come in here waking me up on my own time. You have the nerve to want me to do something with you. Oh, you got some fucking gall, I swear. It takes a few moments for my vision to focus. But... When it does, a familiar face comes into view. Hazel is looming over me, her ponytail brushed like her ponytail brushes my cheek. Her fingers are curled about my shoulders. But she draws away when my eyes open and beams. Hello there, sleeping beauty! How are you feeling? Good? Tired. I yawn again and turn over in my bed. Can't you give me a few more minutes? No way! This is too important to wait! What? 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 What is, what is it? What, what, but my boss doesn't want me to come into the office, does he? Forget about your boss! I'm here to be your exos exercise fairy! To take care of your health! Ah. 
I groaned. I was afraid of this might happen. Hazel takes her health and that of others very seriously, which I suppose is a good thing. But I came here to relax, not work up a sweat. I'd rather idle away my hours on a beach, slipping, sipping cocktails like Maria. Speaking of which, where is Maria? I swear she slipped in. <laughs> my brain just had a very childish thought, where it's like, like, where is she? Where's Maria? And finding out she's not here, just sob for the next couple of minutes. Maria finds out later, like. Oh, I just, she just feels very a bit remorseful. It just, I mean, he is a crybaby. I know, but like, he's my crybaby. Like, he doesn't have abandonment issues. He just really likes Maria. I don't mean to ask this, because I'm not trying to accuse you of anything, but do you have any... Favoritism? Are you favoritizing me over my sisters? Because I'm just asking. Because they're breaking. Yes. Like, I'm favoritizing you over your sisters. Do you love us all equally? Yes, I definitely love you all equally. More, some more than others. Some less than more. Hmm. I don't know how to take this. You can take it as a compliment or take it as disrespect. Do whatever you wish with it. I'm not changing my feelings because your sisters are jealous. I swear she slipped into my bed last night, garbed in her succubus outfit, but I can't see her hide nor hair of her in this morning. Did she really come into my bed or was that a dream? It certainly didn't seem very Maria-like to seek shelter in my arms after listening to a silly horror story. I can't remember all the finer points of Hazel's yarn, but I can't recall it being all that blood-curdling. Now don't you ugh me, mister! Hazel takes my shoulders again and then turns me over so I'm facing her. Why don't you come jogging with me just once? You never know, you might like it! I'm pretty certain that I won't. I already... Uh, pardon me. I already have to get up at the crack of dawn and spend... And spend to... Spend to the... And sprint to the train so I can get to the office on time. It's not fun or invigorating. It's stressful. Well, yeah, but... That's because you're not jogging for the love of it. Exercising for the sake of exercising is way different beast to running for the train. I'll show you how to limber up first, so you don't put too much strain on your muscles, and I'll let you go at your own pace. We can take a scenic route around the beach. It's super pretty here, and I'll point out all the sights. We'll only be half an hour, an hour tops. When we get back, Haifu and I will have breakfast waiting for us. I swear her, her miso soup will taste better than ever on the back of a rigorous workout. You really feel like you've earned it. I'm going to be honest, that... I can kind of get that vibe, because, like, I, like, basically, I walk to the bus stop, then get off at a certain stop, then go to walk directly to the gym, then I gotta, you know, leave the gym, walk to the bus stop, get on the bus, walk again, and there's like a, a pretty decent way from there, and it's like, my legs are throbbing, but the, the, it's like this satisfying pain as soon as I lay down, right? Like, it's, it hurts, it's throbbing, but it's almost like, my legs themselves are breathing like in and out right and so it's less burning pain and more throbbing pain and just relaxing after having to walk it's just such a satisfying feeling like some masochist shit I'm telling you you'll really feel like you've earned it come on Hiro Hazel shakes me even more insistently than the last time. Keep a girl company, why don't you? It's such a lovely morning. It's a shame to waste it. 
let's go have some fun. Hazel's weed, weed, weedling, I doubt going jogging will be fun. Some people are made for exercise, and I, alas, am not one of them. My stamina is decent, I guess, but I don't see the point of jogging. You have to gasp for air. You get all sweaty, and if you're not careful, you can turn an ankle. People who go jogging for fun are strange. Alien breed to me, even more so than suck you by. I'll never understand them. I don't see why anybody would want to make themselves miserable than life already is so, so stressful. Hazel's pros pros uh, proposition is not an attractive one, but she sure is sure she sure is being insistent. Please hurry, please, please, please! I just want to spend more time with you. Then why don't you spend time in not in me, like with me, like in just sleep, rest. I'm glad she wants to spend time with me so much, but I'm not so but I'm so not in the mood for this. What should I do? Sorry, Hazel, but I can't do this. I'm too tired. You will have to go ahead without me. I lie back in bed and pull the covers over me, despite Hazel's complaints. She tries to rouse me a few more times, but I refuse to budge. I'm on vacation, damn it, and I want to rest and relax, even if she doesn't. I'm not going to let her push me around. Stubbornly, I shut my eyes, and despite Hazel's best attempts, I go back to sleep. I get a lot of sleep in the warmth and comfort of my bed, then head to the kitchen when I'm ready. Haifumai has a delicious meal waiting, which I devour eagerly. I spend the day playing around with the others, then return to Ayu's beach house when the sun is beginning to set. The six of us sit in the living room, idly flipping through TV channels for what... for want of anything better to do when Hazel pipes up. Hey you guys, I just had another totally amazing idea! Another? Maria groans. This isn't going to be like your so-called amazing idea last night, is it? Were you told, were you told that silly not at all scary horror story? For a horror story that supposedly wasn't at all scary, it sure did freak Maria out. I felt a bit sorry for Maria, but it was gratifying to see such a shy, vulnerable side of her. If Hazel does want to tell more spooky stories, I certainly won't uh, veto it. What Hazel proposes, however, is different in nature, though similar in spirit, to her announcement the night prior. Nah, I think I'm through with horror stories. I ain't the best at telling them. I just can't bring my stories to life properly. I ain't good enough with words, and my vocab ain't developed enough. I tried my best, but my story didn't have enough impact. I think, I think if Hazel's tale had even more of an impact, Maria might truly have passed out. That's because, that's because the subject matter you choose was utterly, un, unutterably stupid. I scoffs her arms folded. If you want to captivate your audience with a story, you have to ensure it's worth telling first, otherwise it's a wasted effort. It's similar to us idols, if nobody wants to see us perform, we're worthless. It doesn't matter how much we practice, we live and die in the court of public opinion. That's so harsh, are you, are you? The world is a harsh place. The world is a harsh place. There's no sense in acting otherwise. What I must endure on a day-to-day -day basis is far more frightening than any ghost stories. Then, it's a good thing I don't want to tell any ghost stories tonight. Then I have... Then, I've had enough of that. Okay, uh... Should 
sorry. I was trying to see the gallery because I'm like, I want to like each stream. Uh, I want to like at least have three three gallery things, you know, three images. I was thinking it might be fun if we did something more visceral. Visceral? Cosmo's tips her head to one side, confused. Do you want us to start cutting each other up? No, 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 not like that. I was just thinking. Horror is something you can't experience with your ears alone. You've got to let it soak into all five of your senses. We've graduated beyond the need for silly stories. It's high time we face our fears head on in the dead of night with nothing but our flashlights to guide us. In other words, I think we should go on a test of courage. Let's take a walk in the dark and push our nerves to the limit. What do you say? A test of courage. <sighs> that does sound more amusing than telling stories. And it might make for a good workout. I, w I wouldn't mind going for a walk. It really is a pretty night and the stars are so bright. I bet I could take a whole bunch of photos. <laughs> I am not opposed to the idea either. It sounds like a novel way to pass the time. Alright. Hazel punches her fist into the air victoriously. Then it's decided. Let's get let's get out there and face all the ghouls and ghosts and monsters head on. This is gonna be such a blast. Maria's might Maria, as might be expected, looked less than enthused about this idea. She stares at me helplessly, a cold sweat already beginning to form upon her brow. Hi, Ray. Sorry, oh, my brain just... It's like the dumb parody is like... <laughs> Hi, Ro, it me. <laughs> Sorry, my brain's very mature. She murmurs, her voice softer than a whisper. Say something to her, please. You can't let this go ahead. I can't go for a walk in the forest at night. It'll be bad for my heart. I'm tensing up just thinking about it. I gotta... <laughs> I gotta do something. Oh, Maria, she looks petrified. I do feel sorry for her, but... What do you say, Hiro? My man, are you in? I don't know if that's the best idea. I have no qualms about this test of courage myself, but I think Maria might... might. She's looking awfully peaky. I'll have to try and defend her. That's my responsibility as her partner. Sorry, Hazel, but can we take a rain check on this? I'm not in the mood to go trepassing around in the dark. Huh? But, but why? Hazel pouts. It'll be really fun! Come on, Hyro! Don't be a spoil sport! Everybody else wants to go ahead with this! I would not say I want to do it, but it might make... But it might make for an interesting change of pace! Why are you being so hesitant, Hyro? Ice lips curl into a vicious sneer. Don't tell me you're actually scared of ghosts. N no, I'm, I'm not, but... M m Crap, I can't believe I was about to say Maria's name there. How can I smooth this over without sounding totally suspicious? Ah, uh, m m My m m Your mama? Smooth save. Are you snorts? You call your mother mama? Like, you call your mother mama? Y yeah! Crap, 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 crap! This has gone from bad to worse. I must sound like a complete cretin. But I've 
but I've come too far to go back now. I can't spill Maria's secret, so I'll need to keep going with this shaky sub subterfuge. Yeah, my mama told me not to wander around at night. It could be dangerous. <clears throat> and you still care what your mother's... Sorry, mama said... You better watch your fucking tone about my mama. I don't care you make fun of me, but you make fun of my mama. I will fucking flog you. Super strength succubus, how about you suck this tit? No, wait. Suck this fit. Whatever, you get my point. You can make fun of me all you want, but I will fucking rip you limb to limb, discombobulate your joints and muscles if you dare even think about insulting my precious mama! <laughs> Ayu makes quotation marks with her fingers, grinning as she does so. I think she's having a bit too much fun with this. Not that I can blame her. I really set myself up to fail here. Thinks at your age? I can't believe it! Grow up, Hyra! I've gotta admit, that was pretty uncool. I'm starting to think you might seriously be scared of ghosts. Can you imagine at his age? That would be too funny! Jeez, I'm st now I'm starting to laugh! <laughs> I doubles over with mirth. Her arms would be about her stomach. I didn't, I didn't know you were such a mommy's boy. <laughs> Hiro, you're such a scaredy cat. Oh, if only your mama was here, I bet she could look after you. <laughs> I'm going to fucking rip out your throat. Oh, you're turning red. You're right, I am. But you are mistaken. It is not out of embarrassment. It is out of pure fucking rage. Ah, fucking lunges towards her. Start strangling her. I'll fucking show you what for, you heartless buffoon! Talk about my mama like that! I'm going to rip your skin ear from ear down to your fucking tonsils! Don't you dare bring her precious name out of your horrid fucking mouth! And like the others are struggling to fucking, like even with their succubus abilities, they are struggling to fucking pull me up. I will snap your neck like twiddly D sticks, bitch! I will go to the ends of the earth, dismember you one by fucking one until you can see your own entrails be disemboweled, I swear! He just had to fucking knock me unconscious for me to finally fucking, like, pull me off of her. Watching your own eyes as your own fucking organs fail you slowly as the life support wires get cut. Oh, you're alive, huh? How, how, how alive, huh? Can I put you in different jars? Your liver, your lung, your fingers, your teeth, your eyes, your gums, your brains? What point are you alive then, huh? Oh, I'm sorry, I must be fucking deranged. I truly am apolo- I do apologize. But she bring it onto herself. <laughs> it's just a prank. The prank in question. <sighs> I grit my teeth together. It's taking all my willpower not to yank Ayu's twin toes out of her scalp. You can believe what you want. I'm just trying to be sensible. It's pitch black outside. What if one of us twists our ankle? It won't be completely dark. I'll bring a few flashlights. Come on, let's go have fun. I've got it all planned out. You wouldn't want my best efforts to be for nothing, would you? That's no way to treat a cute gal like me. Think of what your mod say about that. Well, I glance at Maria. I was hoping to avoid this, but for her sake, 
for her sake, but he was being awfully pushy. I don't know if I can extract us from this sticky situation. Sorry, Maria. I settle up to her, then murmur in her ear. Uh, I guess I couldn't dissuade Hazel after all. That is all right, dear. Maria rests one hand upon mine, a small smile on her face. It is enough that you made an effort. Oh, I am not looking forward to this. How about you guys can go first and we just don't leave? You're like, oh yeah, we came back early. I mean, you can't really prove that we didn't do that. Back in the Queen of Succubuses opens the portal. No, I can prove it. They didn't fucking leave. They got their ass. They... <laughs> she got her ass ate. They didn't fucking move. They didn't move. I mean, they moved, but not in the way you wanted. They didn't fucking... They just went back after everyone's... <laughs> They were at the entrance of the fucking forest. Shh, shut the fuck up. No, if I can't fuck you, no one can. Shut the fuck up. Go away. Go back to hell. No, fuck you. Fuck me. I'm not gonna f fuck off. Fuck me, damn it, coward. Fuck me like the baboon man ate that you are. Go away. Shut up. You're making things worse. They're cowards. Pussy cowards. Shut the fuck up. No, I'm not looking forward to this. Maria bites her lower lip. Do you promise to look out for me? I'll do my best. It's the least I can offer, really. I am... I am bungled... I am... I bangled that so badly! Upsetting Maria is the last thing I want. I'm gonna be clinging to her sides crying because I saw a fucking, uh, what's it, like the one triangle, the spider the size of a dinner plate just hanging from a web casually. It's like, squeeze, like, ow, you're squeezing my hand a bit too hard. She looks over to me and I'm keeping my, like, I'm keeping it together, trying to keep my feet slow and steady to not run without her. The six of us head outside, led by Hazel. She guides us across the beach, and the ocean died black beneath the starry sky, a flashlight in hand. Haifumai holds a second flashlight, which Hazel bequeathed her before leaving, and I have the third. Once we've crossed the beach, Hazel le then leads us up an incline. We follow the dirt path for a while, then take a detour through the trees. The trees are tall and densely packed. It's so dark, it'd be impossible to see without these flashlights. The soles of my shoes crunch against the grass, which sways around us, around me. In the foliage, I can hear the sound of chirping insects, cicadas maybe. It's not cold per se, but the air is decently Decidingly lukewarm, I dig my hand into my pocket, shivering. Marie is shivering too, though I don't think it's because of the temperature. She clutches her translucent wrap around. She clutches her translucent wrap around her waist and glances about, her eyes wide. She's cr there's a crunching sound, and Maria, in a far cry from her usual composed self, almost jumps out of her skin. Did you hear that sound? It's alright, don't worry. It was just a twig. H how can you be so certain? It's so dark, it's hard to see anything. W what if it was some sort of... Maria's voice drops to a whisper. Monster. If there are any monsters around here, I'll protect you. Don't worry, still. Have I, like, have a giant 
like unsanitary stick fucking stabbed through my fucking chest. I grin. You're forgetting, you are a succubus. You're probably one of the most monstrous things around here with your horns and your tail. Uh, are, you ins are you saying I'm a monster hire? No, I didn't mean it quite like that. I'm trying to console you. You're physically stronger than any ordinary humans. I bet you'd be able to overpower any monster. That might be true, but what about the ghost? They don't have a corporeal bodies as far as I know. Well, if they don't have any corporeal bodies, then they can't corporeally do shit. Golly! Sorry, sorry! My brain, sorry, I'm so sorry. I can use magic, but it might not have any effect upon them. I'll be completely, I'll be completely at their mercy. Shh, it's fine. I take Maria's hand in mine and squeeze it, hoping this will console her. Kiss her on the head. Maria's shivers do seem to subside somewhat, but still she looks about it. About us anxiously, her eyes darting heather and tether. She looks so... Sorry, my brain's just thinking of them frantically looking around as things go around them, right? And they see a silhouette, right? And it's just some dude, right? And they're like... Who are you? What do you want? And he goes, I am Adolf Hitler! Commander of the Little Rock! Also dope on the mic! You stink, Vader! Step in my shower! <laughs> so my brain is being fucking tired of she looks afraid, which I guess is a reasonable reaction. The forest does look pretty spooky. There's so many shadows, any number of strange creatures could be hiding among them. I glance about, keeping a tight grip on my flashlight. If I drop it, I might be in some real trouble. The forest, pr the forest is pretty dense. Could you not have her carry you bridal style and then fly into the sky? Sorry, my brain, my brain's... Just... I need to be careful where I'm putting my feet. If not, I might slip. I wouldn't make much of a knight in shining armor lying on my ass. I slip up. A slip up like that would do nothing but ease Maria's anxieties. Like, a slip up like that would do nothing to ease Maria's anxieties. How long, do you ex how long do you expect us to walk, Hazel? It feels like it's been hours. I don't want to turn turn an ankle or tear my skirt. I'm getting tired. I'm not used to so much exercise. It's so dark I can't take any nice photos either. Not to worry. You two are almost there. We just need to go a little further. That's what you said the last time we asked. And we were almost there then. But now we're really, nearly almost there. Sincerely? Yes, really! Hazel comes to a halt, then turns to face us. She grins her white teeth, bright in the harsh yellow light exuding from her torch. Right, this should be just as a good spot as any to begin. What, what are we beginning exactly? Maria extracts her hand from mine, then draws herself up to her full height. 
eyes narrowed. She forced herself to look cool and calm and not at all afraid. We have been walking for some for quite some time, and I am in heels no less. I have no desire to loiter about in the dark a moment longer. Why have I why I have half a mind to go back home? Ah, oh, come on, Maria. Don't go back don't go don't back out now. Not when we've come this far. We haven't even gotten to the good part yet. Clearly Maria's upper lip curls. Nothing we have done tonight has been in the vicinity of good. It has all been quite tiresome. I have gone along with your games for quite long enough, but now I am tired. I want very much to... There's another rustle in the undergrowth, which prompts a startled squeak from Maria's mouth. Eek! 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 Hazel tips her head to one side. What does that mean? Is that some sort of euphemism? No, oh, um, I, uh... Maria glances away, her brow's cheeks flushed. I mean, to say, I want to very much extract, yes, extract myself from the, all the silliness. Why do they, why is she blushing, though? I mean, maybe we're embarrassed, but it's like... If I'm scared, like, imagine you're getting chased by fucking Michael Myers and you start blushing. Oh no, I'm totally gonna die. That's gonna be a fucking, that's fucking weird. Oh no, he's gonna cut off my turn on boner. No, don't do that with your sharp pointy girth knife. You, you're making it fucking weird. I almost don't want to kill you now. You've ruined my fun. You're almost not worth killing. You're fucking weirding me out. Oh, come on, big, muscly, six-foot muscle man. That's probably an asylum that I'm sexualizing. Would you point that six-inch knife deep inside my womb, wo wound? Nope, I'm done. You, you fucking ruined it for me. I don't even want to kill you now. You're just... Fu I'm... I will turn myself in and get a restraining order. You are fucking disgusting. What did I do, Mr. Mask? You're clear, man. I am this close to choking. No, no. Oh, really? No, shut up. Don't. Oh, I'm gonna fucking lose it. You can lose it in me. I'm gonna fucking kill you. But no, no, that'd be too good for you. You need to learn from right for wrong. What? Where are you going? Aren't you gonna penetrate me with your hard, long knife? Nope, done. Come back here! Penetrate me, damn it! No, you're fucking weird! Weird, damn it! Get the fuck off me! Ha! Ah! <laughs> Beat this fuckable slap at me. You are weird, damn it! Damn it! Why are you fucking weird? He's like, I mentioned like Maya is like before that she fucking lunge like I the character lunge and he fucking slams like try to slam her against the wall and like punching her. It's like nose bleeding and broken and like oh slap slap me more. And she's like, no, nope. why are you fucking weird? That wasn't the most incongressive of saves, but Hazel seems none the wiser to Maria's anguish. She bounds forth like a rabbit and winds one arm around Maria's shoulder. Don't go, Maria! Please don't go! We need you here, so we can do this test of courage perfectly. It's like, if, if I want to know what I would do, inserting savior complex. It's like, oh, like I, you found it? It was like, look, if I find out you have been teasing her about her fears, I'm no longer your cameraman. You can't do, uh, yes, I can. I can do that very much. I can, like, 
Da da da. I mean, yeah, but surely, sure, my job may not like it, but with Maria's influence, surely I can find someone else to be a better cameraman, huh? And then you can choose someone else to be your cameraman, huh? Just completely fuck with her. So if I see you or hear from Maria that you're teasing her about her fears, I'm, I'm not being your cameraman anymore. And you can find someone else to love. Or, I don't know. It's hard to say find someone else to love when, you know, it's hard to find someone else to love when you only love yourself. You mean, we've yet to begin this so-called test? Do you think we had? Hazel frowns. It ain't a proper test of courage until we've all split off into teams. There's six of us right now, so we can make three teams of two. If you go, we won't be able to make up the numbers properly, and all I have to do is call this whole thing off. And I'll have to call this whole thing off. Don't let me down, please, please, please. I know it'll be a lot of fun. That is debatable. Ayu pulls a face. But as we came all the way out here, it'd be a shame to retreat now. I'm kind of curious too. It'd be nice if I could get paired with Hara so we can walk through the forest together. I can cling to him and I can pretend to be scared and he can hold my hand and pat my head. Cosmo sighs wistfully. It'll be super romantic. As if Hiro would want to pair off with you, your clinging and grasping would only slow him down. He would be far better off with me. No, me. Me! Now, now, girls, settle down. There is little point arguing about such things now. What do you say, Maria? Will you accompany us, or would you prefer to turn back? Well... Maria looks at her feet at best. She's used to being the center of attention, but that's a boardroom and fancy balls out of the middle of the moonlight fucking forest. Maria isn't wearing a business suit right now, and she isn't in a plush velveteen gown. She's wearing a white sundress, far simpler than her usual attire, which gives her a fresh face decidedly a youthful look. Maria is accustomed to being in control, but here, divorced from her employees and the wealthy elite who adore her, she has lost much of her status. Maybe that's why she looks so unusually abashed. If you really wish to do this, I suppose I can go along with it. Personally, I find this all very foolish, but I would not wish to spoil your fun. I'm being very... magnogamous. So you ought to thank me for this. I'm doing... I'm d doing you all a big favor. You are indeed. Thanks a bunch, Maria, for playing so nice. It's kind of funny. Hazel giggles. I used to be kind of afraid of you after you were so mean to me, but you're not such a bad person after all. All this time, you've just been looking out for us, haven't you? Y yes that's right. I am your oldest sister in a sense, and it is a duty to watch over you. I would not wish any of you to come to harm. I'm gonna harm myself just to fuck with you. I'm sorry. Thanks very much, that's a sweet sentiment, but I'm sure we'll be fine. Now! Hazel draws her arm away from... I was just gonna say Monica. Maria, now look between us. Here's the rules for this little test of mine. We'll split up into three groups of two. Like I said, with nothing but flashlight to guide us, there'll be, there'll be one flashlight per group. I've been jogging around here every day, and last morning I stumbled upon this creepy abandoned shrine buried deep in the woods. I want us to look for this shrine. The first group who gets there will be decided the winners. Do you have any questions? I do, though it's more of a complaint, really. Yeah, for some reason I ain't surprised. What's up, Ayu? 
It won't be much of a competition if you know where the shrine is already. Your team will have an unfair advantage. Maybe so, but I don't remember where this shrine was exactly and I found it during the day. It would be hard to retrace my steps at night. Everything looks kind of samey around here. I ain't really the best at directions, you know. I can believe that. You seem to have about as much common sense as Cosmos. Don't you always say I have no common sense? Exactly. I use scoffs. Then I retract my earlier statement. Being on the team with you mightn't be such a big advantage after all. I'm glad we've got that cleared up. Any more questions? Yeah, I've got a real question this time. Will the winning team receive any particular reward? Hmm. I don't... I didn't think of that. Hazel ponders, one hand beneath her chin. I guess I could give you my autograph. Huh? Ayu pulls her face. Who'd want your autograph? That's such a cheap prize. Hey, I'm pretty famous. I'll have you know my autograph's worth a whole bunch of money. Yeah, so... Yes, yeah, so I'm famous too, in case you didn't fucking realize. We all are in the, our own ways, apart from Hiro. To me, your autograph's worth even less than a single grain of rice. Ooh, that's kind of harsh, are you? Are you sure you don't want my autograph? I'm quite sure. I suppose I could prepare a celebratory meal for the winning team. I can cook whatever it is they wish for tomorrow's lunch. Pussy. <laughs> Sorry. Maria's pussy. Sorry. 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 How does that sound? That's a better prize. What if your team wins, Hyphamin? I will cook the same traditional fare I often do, as it is of little consequence to me. I do not care overly about much reward. I want to have a good time with everybody. And it would be nice, I suppose, if I could meet a real ghost. Beep. Maria winces, then takes my hand in her own again. It's not that hot outside, but Maria's palms, I can't help but note, it's pretty sweaty. Is that... An expectation? Anxiety? Outright fear? Do, do you think there's a high possibility we will meet any ghosts, Haifumai? Of course not! I use schnorts. Ghosts don't exist. Everybody knows that. You wanna pull that? Pulls out a fucking revolver and points it to my chin. Let's test your theory, bitch! Wait. I had a really dumb idea. Really, really dumb idea. What the fuck? Ah.
That is so fucking terrible. Sorry, I just made a fucking doodle of like the. <laughs> just had a really dumb idea of like. I'm not actually making it, at least not now or ever. Where it's like <laughs> the joke I made about shooting myself to test if ghosts are real, right? My brain just told me to like. <laughs> I made a shit doodle and then added arrows at a tub as a shitty Friday Night Funkin' mod. And like theoretically, if I were to. Uh, make a mod, I'm pretty sure the song would either be called Tested or Tested Theory. And it's just <laughs> me fucking with them with like trying to like, like, let's test the theory and they're just like, whoa, 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 hey, hey, let's talk about this, put the gun away. You know, like, nah, 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 let's, let's see, you don't believe in ghosts? <laughs> you gotta believe. Which is a really fucking shit dumb doodle. What did I miss? Y yes, um, uh, of course. Uh, um, maybe the winner can get a kiss from Hara. Cosmos pipes up before I you can question Maria's unusual, uh, resentence. That sounds like a prize worthy fighting for, worth fighting for. Now that, now that's even more worthless than Hazel's stupid signature. I'm so incredible, I could get a kiss from Hiro whenever I want, and more besides. But, well, I guess I wouldn't hate, the, hate it. Wow, thanks Ayu, I love you too. What? I never said I loved you, you were here. <laughs> the most, I've, that whole interaction, I fucking love that. Yeah, yeah, I know you didn't, but you've dropped enough hints. They're not all that subtle either. I hope you don't think I'm. I hope you didn't. Don't think I'm stupid. Uh, I. I don't think you're stupid, per se, but I have often questioned your intelligence. Now, that is the sort of thing you should say about the guy you... Now, is that the sort of thing you should say about the guy you want to kiss? I, I don't want to kiss you! I want you to kiss me! Isn't that the same thing? No, it's not! It's completely different! If a guy makes the first move... It's what the fuck is that word? It's a bish ho Joe game. It's a girl make if the girl it, it's a girl makes the first move. It's an Oto Otomi game. Ho guys often make the first move in Otomi games too. What the fuck are you saying? Perhaps people don't tend to like the sort of women. What about you, Hiro? Do you prefer to kiss or be kissed? I guess I don't mind either way, so as long as both people are into it, it's not a big deal. Ah, I see. So you're a man of varied tastes. I would keep that in mind. And perhaps in the future hours, I shall be even more assertive. Foo foo foo. <laughs> Now I wonder why Cosmos is laughing like that. Is she planning something sinister? Oh. Sorry. Uh sorry, my brain just with the word sort of, it's like, it remind me of this very unflattering, like, uh, rapey, furry anti-sort like a while ago. 
and it's like it's like a dude chained to a wall and like he's been there like for a couple months and it's just so nasty it's just like I want a happy ending for the dude and it's like she's just not a nice person I just want him to have a happy ending Plus, it's like, plus, I also don't like the designs because they're questionable. But like, because it's like, you know, like, they're clearly furries, but then they take some attributes from the actual, like, like, animals or shit, and it's like, really fucking weird. It's like, for example, when like a, there's a furry character or whatever, but they still have like the multiple dog nipples or shit, despite having two like massive tits. It's like that weirds me out. It's like, yeah, I understand like furries are supposed to be like animals with that's anthropomorphic with like char humanly characteristic traits, but it's like, ugh, you know? It just, it just, it just, I just, ugh. And it reminded me of like the one situation. It's just like I'm not saying that's what a sort of woman is like, but it's like I don't know why it just reminded me of that. And it's just I did not like it. I did not like it at all. It was nasty. Like it wasn't like scrat or anything, but it's just the way he was treating the guy. Just ugh. Perhaps I ought to be on my guard from now on. Okay, that's the prize sorted. The winner gets a kiss from Hyro. If that's everything, let's sort out the teams. Uh, pardon me. I want to be on Hyro's team. No, me. Me. I know you two want to be with Hyro, but to be honest, I kind of do too. But we can't all fight over him. Let's draw a loss instead. That way, there'll be no complaining. I'm gonna complain. It's bold of Hazel to assume her fellow succubi won't find something to complain about. I use one of the most quarrelsome people I know. She could be in paradise and she still find something to turn her nose up at. Still, I've got to give Hazel some credit where it's due. Drawing lots does seem to be a better way to go about this than a free-for-all. If left to their own devices, Cosmos and I would no doubt start bickering. Knowing them, they'd each take out one of my arms, then pull until they pop clean... sorry. Knowing them, they'd each take out one of my arms and then pull until they pop, cleaning out their socket. It wouldn't be the best time. It wouldn't be the first time they've clung to me. Unfortunately for them, I happen to like both my arms where they are, and I'd be upset to lose them. Here are some lots I prepared earlier. Hazel holds out six identical sticks, their ends concealed by her fingers. The ends have different colors. We've all got to take one, then pair off with whoever has the stick with the color match matching theirs. I think that sounds fair. Nobody has any complaints with Hazel's proposal, so let me let me eat, right? Let me eat, but I don't want to eat while looking at anime girls because that, like, I like things separately. I don't like mixing things. Like, if, if there's like a horny scene, I don't know why that just, it's like, you like porn, but are you really gonna like, like, eat a whole fucking like cereal of like Nutrigrain while some chick gets cream pie? That's gonna throw you off. At least it'll throw me off. I like my things separated. I don't want to look at some fanboy getting his ass filled while I eat my fucking like, I don't know, uh, Chinese omelette. 
for example, is just life things separately.
save. Okay, let me see my menu. I will keep going until the next you know, image. But until that, like, you know, because I'm pretty sure I missed some images with the choices. Uh, I got an achievement. Smooth save. And usually the icons are like images themselves. But the smooth save is like, the Punisher was close, I didn't get that. <clears throat> Nobody has any complaints with his proposal, so we follow along with it. We all select our sticks, then examine them beneath the muted moonlight. Mine is yellow. Sorry. I'm just too tired. Mine is yellow. Does anybody else have a yellow stick? Ugh. I pulls a face, then pro offers her stick to Haifumai. Yeah, I do. They're a perfect match. Excellent. It would seem we are on the same team. Let us both do our best. <laughs> My life is in your hands. D don't be so melodramatic. Stop putting... Stop patting my head. I'm not a dog. I'm not a dog, you know. You're going to mess up my hair. I have red. Does anybody else have red? That's me. Looks like it's me and you, Cosmos. Oh, I see. Cosmos sighs, then kicks the ground with the tip of her foot. I wanted to be with her. But you're not too bad, Hazel. That ain't exactly glowing praise, but I'll take it. <laughs> Now, let's do our best. I don't play game for participation trophies. I only play to win. I, too, would like to win. So I can kiss Hyro. So I would do my best. I cannot let that wicked Ayu best me. Who are you calling wicked, you little twerp? I'll show you! Hyphen and I will get, the get to the shrine before any of you! I'll kiss Hyro, and you have to stand and watch on the sidelines. Ha 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 And you wonder why I call you wicked. You're laughing just like an anime villain. Ayu has, like, no chill, but I guess that's a part of her appeal. Yes! My stick, meanwhile, is green. It's bright emerald green. Like the grass underfoot. And coincidentally, like my partner's eyes. I was gonna say that, but... Am bright green? I wouldn't say that. I guess that leaves you and me. Uh, I guess that leaves you with me, Maria. Yeah, sorry, my brain spaced up. I hope you don't mind too much. Uh, oh no, I'm grateful. Actually, I was hoping I would be paired with you. You um, wouldn't mind too much if I find myself clinging to you, will you? Nah, it's fine. You can cling to me as much as you want. But, but then we will lag behind the others. Think about it like this, you can get a couple kisses in before they win the race. Just because, you know, kissing me is a winning prize doesn't mean I can't give any participation prize to you know who. Hmm. Oh, I don't care about that. It makes no difference to me whether we win or lose. Your comfort is way more important. Now, I offer Maria my arm. Shall we depart? It looks like the others have already set off. R right. Um. Maria loops her arm through mine. 
Do not know if I was gonna burp through all up. My bad. Then offers me a small smile. Her smile trembles at the edges with tre trepidation, but she looks no less beautiful for it. Please lead the way. I will be relying on you. Da 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 It's hard to be scared when I'm so excited. And they're I they always see through, and I don't know if I like that part of the design. I think the whole uh, I know I've been over this like revealing clothing okay but it's like when it has less to show off the hotter it is because there's more to tease and if you're just gonna make it see-through then that's boring you know and no offense to see-through clothing if you're in the mood a spicy mood that's fine but everyday clothing that's fucking shit is she wearing the fucking necklaces from the spooky month cultists I mean, I don't need to see the stars when I have your eyes, baby girl. Blech. Okay, a little bit annoyed that everyone else gets unique, mostly unique costume changes, but I couldn't. How are you holding up, Maria? Are you okay? I am... I, I'm... Fine. That's what Maria says, but her actions belies her words. She's clinging to me like a limpet. Her sizable bus pushed against my arm. I am fucking salivating. I can't say I dislike the close proximity, it's hard to keep a steady pace like this, but her body is very soft. All in all, it's quite the cozy situation for me. Maria, alas, looks scared out of her skin. Her eyes are too wide, like a startled rabbit's, and I can feel her shivering. Sorry, sir, my brain had a horrible, horrible thought. Don't worry about it. Maybe it was a bad idea to engage in Hazel's silly test of courage. Test my wood, bitch. Sorry. Please, test my wood. I have no qualms about it. I stop being scared. Of, I stop being scared of the dark and the imaginary monsters that lurk within it. When I was five, but Maria is almost paralyzed by fear. Her steps are small and shuffling, and that's not because of her clothes. Her office attire is almost restrictively tight, and with its high-waisted pencil skirt, but her sundress is much more bellowy. It should be easy for her to move, but it isn't. We're almost definitely going to come in last place with this little contest. Not that I mind overly much. I don't care about winning. I do, however, care about Maria. Are you sure you're okay? Y yes, I'm sure. There's no problem. I'm utterly, completely... <laughs> Wait, I can see that expression change. Adorable. Maria's voice cuts off, surging into a scared squirrel as she clings to me. An indis in in industry shape, only partially illuminated by my flashlight, darts across our path. The undergrowth rustles, then consumes it, hiding it from view. Oh my goodness. Maria stares at me, melting 
meeting my brown eyes with our own, with her own wide surprised ones. You know, <clears throat> I'm glad that I have normal colored eyes and not just anime protagonists. One of them is the fiery flames of hell, while the other is the bluey ocean of light. <laughs> Sorry. My brain keeps thinking of shit posts and memes and I just laughed at myself. Just thinking of the the D and D character, Chuck was the clown. He's trying to sneak around. It's just that. <laughs> what in the world was that, Hira? Do you think it was a ghost? I doubt it. Wait. Let me save and be the hero. I need a hero. Save me now. I need a hero. Save me now. Oh, yeah. I don't know. It seemed a bit too corporeal for that. Not to mention small and furry. Th then was it a monster? I suppose it could have been a baby monster. But I think, though I can't... But I think, though I can't tell, it was a little hard to see. It was a rabbit. A rabbit? Hmm. Oh, I do hope so. Maria exhales. Some of the tension slips from her shoulder. But she doesn't draw away from me. <clears throat> She's clinging to me as though for dear life. I retract everything I said earlier. I was trying to appear strong, but I cannot keep up the appearance with you. This is simply awful. I can't stand it. I like going for walks in the forest during the day, but it's no fun at all at night. It's so dark I can scarcely see. Even with the flashlight on the trees look like grasping claws. There's no telling what is hiding in the undergrowth, and it's so cold. I don't understand how anybody could enjoy this. Hazel must be insane. Sorry, I just think of the Black Griffin, Black Griffin song, Gre Griffin song, Griffith, and I for my too. Oh, they're all just as bad as each other. Each other. Marie has been soldiering on for a good 20 minutes, almost surgically attached to my arm, but I think she might be nearing her limit. I'm afraid if I keep pushing, she'll have a breakdown. Maybe I should suggest a retreat. That would, in all likely, be our best move. I don't want Maria to suffer pointlessly, not over something that's supposed to be fun. Are you sure you want to keep going? I have no choice but to. I already agreed to the silliness. I ought to see it through to, until the end. You might have, but there's no shame in changing your... Sorry. You might have, but there's no shame in changing your mind. You're trembling like a leaf, and I can hear your heart thudding. You're clearly not cut out for this. Why don't we go back to the beach house? I can text Hazel and tell her we're bailing on the competition. I'm sure she won't mind. I think it's a perfectly sensible idea, but Maria doesn't seem to agree. No, no, no. That will never do. If I turn back now, it will ruin the fun of the other- FUCK THE FUN OF THE OTHERS! DAMN! I'm sorry, but it's like, when was my life supposed to be relied on the fun of others? I do this because I want to. Fuck the others. I mean, I might because they get will get pissy at me and I might have to. But that's not the point. Fuck them. Like, why is it my responsibility so they can have fun? I didn't want to go. You didn't care for it. It doesn't matter. Like, you may care. Oh, that, 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 that is fucking pissing me off. I might actually get to Farrell. <laughs> nope, nope, I'm re, I'm, I'm, I promise. I'm, I'm re, 
I'm reassuring myself. I'm I'm recentering. <coughs> Sorry, I let I let it slip <coughs> a little bit. <coughs> but seriously, Magic is like, man, I'm sleepy, but I can't leave because I have to play about 15 more games with my friend. Otherwise, they'll get mad and think I lost. No, it's because you're pure fucking shit. Me being here does not change the fact that you're fucking garbage. Blame me all you want. The thing you need the most is not me, but to fucking improve. And you're not going to do that while I'm here. Because whether or not you win or lose, you're going to badmouth me. So I'd rather go the fuck to sleep and you bitch on your own. I'm sorry, it just pisses me off. Like that, that, that itself really pisses me off. Man, like... I know Terry, like, look, I know Terry called in sick, but it's like, it's not fun to human traffic these innocent people without them. G can you get them here? Because they they're really starting to annoy me. Why? Why? If they... That makes no sense! What does Terry have to do? Like, it makes no sense they would, with Terry here. They would still be annoying, but they're being human traffic. You fucking mole retard! Like, what? what? It, I don't understand this logic. Why does m the satisfaction of others have anything to do with me? It's like, oh, da 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 da, you know? It's like, oh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't jack off because, you know, the Lord's watching. Well, I mean, he could always not watch it. Oh, man, this movie has violence. I don't like it. They should delist it and s because I personally don't like it. Then stop fucking watching it! I'm sorry, but I just don't understand. I just don't understand. You know, you should, you, re, you should really, like, like, oh, you know, you should really not, you know, uh, it's just like, da, 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 like, you should really, you know, not, uh, adopt if you can't, da, 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 like, you should adopt people and not animals, and it's like, well, I mean, they're equally loud, they're equally stressful, they're equally annoying, they equally take up more effort, like, I'd rather get the one that'll fucking probably, I don't know, is more cute and appreciate the things I do for it. I mean, they're both fucking stupid. They both run around and always hit themselves on the fucking wall. Just get the cuter one. Fucking plot solved! I'm sorry, I had a little rant there, it just, I don't know why, that really pissed me off. They sounded so enthused about this competition. As their older sister, I wouldn't want to let them down. Fuck them. Sure, my family lets uh, the, my family. You, I wouldn't say used to, but it's like there'd be times where your family just lets you down, whether it's their fault or the fault of the environment around you. And I don't blame them. It's like, oh, da da da, could you get me this? Well, it depends. I'll have to see how much. I have. Sorry, da da da. It's like, oh, no worries, you know. And you just go about, you know. Sure, it kind of let me down because I was hoping that they'd get me the thing I wanted. But I hold no grudges against them, you know, I just move on and then just try not to think about it. Moreover... Maria clings to me even more tightly. It's... is it... if such a thing is possible, her brow furrowed with concern. I wouldn't want them to realize that I'm afraid of monsters. It would ruin my credibility. They wouldn't have to know. I could think of some excuse. Maybe I could say you sprained your ankle. Nobody would judge you though. then. A white lie may allow me to save face, but 
I would still know it to be a lie. I'm an honourable woman and I would prefer to be honest and upfront. I'm... I, I love you. I love you truly. But we're in this situation because you weren't honest and truthful. And I'm trying to be as calm as possible, but it's really, really, really too late for you to be honest and truthful. Now isn't it? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I really am sorry. I do not wish to make my sisters worry about me either. And their elders and their better. It is my job to fuss about them, not the other way around. So you're determined to see this third. I must. I cannot let my own fears get the better of me. I want to conquer my phobias once and for all. I've I have come so far, it would be a shame to retreat now. The back of my throat's tingling. She looks at me beneath the sweep of dark eyelashes, her face only partially illuminated by the by my flashlight. And I know I'll be safe with you. I trust you wholeheartedly. I'm sure you'll keep me safe no matter what happens. Nothing's going to happen, Maria. But you're on the right score. I'll do my best. I'm... I'd be a pretty cruddy partner if I couldn't allay your worries. Thank you, dear. If I'm with you, I should be able to tough this out. I just need to keep going. It shouldn't be that hard. I only need to place one foot after the other. I can do this. Maria's eyes burn with a newfound determination. A smoldering like fox fire. What the fuck does that mean? I can. I have always been my own worst enemy. I shall not let my own fear best me. I am a mature woman, and I am far too old to get scared by things which could bump in the night. You mean, like, you mean, she points to myself. No, not, not you, sweetheart. I mean, we can go bump in the night to scare the monsters, but you might be introduced to one in Entirely one you're unprepared for. Lock, cock, and pussy key. No, wait. <laughs> Just thinking of cock key and pussy lock. I am being foolish. I know full well there's no such thing as ghosts or mon- WHOA! I just think of the fucking dude who's trying to do the Bowser impression. WHOA! <laughs> <laughs> Maria breaks off screaming as the undergrowth rustles anew. She clings to me, her head buried against my shoulder, and whimpers like a startled kitten. I don't think I can take much more of this. Well, so much for the burst of self-confidence. It vanished as quickly as it came, scattering on the breeze like cherry blossoms. I guess Maria, headstrong though she is, isn't going to shake off her phobias anytime soon. The night scratches, the night scratches out ahead of me, dark and protruding. At this rate, we'll never make it to the shrine. I just hope we don't get lost, then I might start to lose my cool too. Wow 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 Let me check something. Yeah, so I did definitely, like, 
uh, Mr. Achievement says, do you regret the jog yet? Uh, so there's one, two, three, four. So the next one, I want to try. Next time, I want to one, two, three. Uh, and then that'd leave. Yeah, three. So one, two, three, right? Technically, I got three. I just. I'm up to the third one. The I should have went jogging. And that. Yeah, but you get what I mean. Let me add this to the playlist. What the fuck? Oh, there it is. Testing audio. Audio is fine, so at least you could hear me. That's it for now.